Hey there, welcome back, Shubham this side. Now let's move towards a new section where we are going to talk about forms, user input and play with and play around them. Now what I mean by this is till now we have been taking data that was hard coded. That means I have all these data defined by myself only. But it's good time for us to understand how to take data from user. That means how to take a new task from our web page. So for that we are going to utilize form and few other fields inside form. It can be input, it can be checkbox, it can be select option. So there will be many things that we can take as our input from user and then we can submit that information and add it here. So that's the major goal of this whole section. Now during this whole process we will also understand how to submit things, how to control form, how to control its field as well as talk about new hook. So that's the aim of this section. The other quick information that I want to give you is that I have updated the page. That means I try to do a quick improvement with our current design. I have removed the open heading and add it here inside our unordered list. I have also changed the text for this button and earlier it was hide and show. Now it's hide task and show task. Working is still the same. So I have wrapped things here and there. I have changed a bit of CSS, increased the font size for them. Also now we are not using uh, zoom. That means I am not zoomed into 125%. I am currently on 100%. So all the fonts are increased here and there. The width is also 1200 pixel. You just need to copy paste the CSS or I, sh I should say you can just download the entire new file. That would be much easy. For example, I created a div and inside that I added this H1 and button. So they are on same line. And the other thing I did is I added a new CSS file, which is for this particular section. So we are going to play with lot of things and all the CSS is already there. So you can access the initial file and start working from it. That's great. Now let's dive deep with our topic. Let me close my index and let me get into my task list. Yep. So if you observe, this is the entire section that we created for our task list. Now what I want to do is I want to add a new section on top of this where we will have a form to add a new task. So what we need is we need uh, the task title uh, or I should say the task name or something like this. And then I also need an ID and I also need information if the task is completed or not. By default what we can do is we can say task is incomplete or in pending state. So all the tasks that are not completed will be in red and the task which is completed will be in green. Now we can do something like this. So what I'm going to do is instead of adding more code here, I can create a new component along with a new section. So we will have section on the top, which will be about our form. And then this is to show our task. That means section to add task and then section to show task. Okay, so let me close this one. What I'm going to do is here, I'm going to have a new file. And let's say add task.js. We can also say add task form. That should also be fine according to the naming part. Okay, let me use RFC, remove the code. You can also use underscore RFC. And here I am going to create a section called add task. Now remember, there are multiple naming conventions that you can follow with the CSS. Uh, the common is either to use this or you can have add dash task or you can have the camel case add task it's uh, it's according to you i am going to follow add task for now uh, since i have all my css according to it okay so this is our section inside this we need to create form and have all our field so all i have to do is i just create a form let's say form and i need to remove action for now because we will have a different method to submit information. Okay. Inside this, we are going to have everything. Let me save. And the first thing I'm going to do is import my CSS, which is already written. So I can just say slash add task dot CSS much easy for now. Awesome. Now form can have multiple information. 
we can have information about not just text but there can be other types if you know like for example if i say input we have text we can have email we can have password or any other information according to our need but at the end of the day we are dealing with input so if we are trying to do anything in future it will be same for type text or type email or anything else so there is no major difference okay let me remove this and first i'm going to talk about a label let's say i have a label and you will see that instead of for i have html for why remember for is a reserve keyword uh, with javascript and we cannot use inside our jsx so instead of for we have html for uh, let's say task name something like this and then i am going to have a input field which will be of type text and this for need to be associated with this input so we can provide a name and id uh, let's give a name here as task and task to them as well if i save get back here i don't have this form how well we haven't attached it that means we haven't included this in our app we have created this the component exists but we haven't attached this on our app.js so what i need to do is i need to import it i need to just go with import and that should be my add task and that will be from slash component slash add task now you will see one difference here i have double quotes and here single quotes that's because this was auto import so by default auto imports usually use these single quotes and i i don't like them Th working is exactly the same but i just want a proper sync okay great now here i just want to add it uh, let me copy paste this one and add the add task here let me save get back here you can see now we have our form so here is the task name which is the label and if i click on this label you can see i get access here that means if i click here type it will be inside my input field why because they both are associated with the help of this html4 great this is one way by which we can have our input field and then also we can have a button let's say button and here i just need to say add task or add and here i also need to add a type and i'm going to say submit let me save get back here you can see i have add task and i have a simple input and label now one important thing that you need to remember that you can add any type of attribute that exists with html there are chances that you might face error because of the naming part like instead of for now we have html for but the attribute exists that we use with html in jsx all attribute exist there can be some naming change because of reserve keyword let me add some let me add a placeholder for example so let's say uh, task name something like this and then also we can have a maximum length so i can go with max length and i can provide information or the important one that i really use is auto complete and i always use off so if i save this one get back here you can see now this is task and there is no auto complete if i remove auto complete i will get all type of suggestions according to this name field okay that's great so this is some basic html stuff but since we are utilizing them in jsx i'm just mentioning each and everything one important thing you need to remember that this closing tag should be there with input with break with images this should be there why i am informing this again because in future maybe you are trying to copy code from normal html file or maybe you are trying to copy code from just internet some random website chances are this closing tag is missing and you are going to get an error if i remove this for now save get back here you can see you have an error react works great at the time of uh, error information 
you can literally see information about line and what type of error we are getting which is expected uh, JSX closing tag so we are on line 8 and here we need to add that great that's all that's all for this one and if I try to submit some information let's say random if I add nothing is going to work but we are going to have this information on our URL tab and if I just get here I'm not going to get an error yup no error here so that means we are not getting any type of error things are working fine and we can work on further functionalities thank you for following now in the next lecture let us try to understand how to keep an eye on this input field how to see its changes for example if I am typing here I want react to notify for something maybe just have information about what I am typing or just do a console log of things that I am typing so we want that control and in the next lecture let us get that control thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us focus on control if you remember in the previous one I talked about that I can have access to all the information that I'm trying to type inside my input so it can be anything but before that let me quickly remove this label so I just want to have my input only and since I have I have a placeholder so it's pretty clear that here I'm going to enter a task name uh, that's great the other thing is I changed the color of this button because earlier I was using the default button and now I have overwritten the color that's great okay so now we need to focus on on change yep that's the listener that we need to work with so on change basically call a function or whatever the function that we are going to mention here it calls that particular function every time we have a change with our input field so maybe we add a new text, add a number or anything else or maybe we just remove them. On change will call that particular function. Either we can just pass an anonymous function to do something. It can be anything. Let's say console.log and we have access to that information. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. So we can do that or we can just describe a function and call it here. Totally depend on our requirement. Now what I'm going to do is here on the top I am going to describe a function so let's say const I'm going to say handle uh, input or handle task something like that handle change let's say and I am going to do something and here I'm going to call that handle change great and I can just say console.log uh, I'm going to say dash only let me save get back here now if I try to do something it should console log if I say a you can see I have that dash a a a you can see that means I can track that change now I can track that value as well so what I have to do is I have to accept the event it will be there by default that means this event is going to have information about the value that I am changing or anything else so let's say I am going to work with this event you will also see people using e instead of event it's just the parameter name that you want and I can access that value with the help of event target and value I hope you remember this point from JavaScript let me save get back here uh, clear this up also remove this from my URL enter and let's type a b c you can see I am able to print that value that's great now I have access to the value I can do a lot of things maybe I just want to print that information down here that whatever I am typing or maybe I just want to calculate the length or anything I can do that all I have to do is just do from here so let's say I create state here let's say const and I'm going to say task value and let's say set task value I can say use state and by default it should be empty and then instead of console log I can just set this task value 
So that means every time I do a change, I am going to update this task value with the value that I am entering. It can be ABC or any type of task. And let me try to print it here. So I can create a P tag and just print it here. Let me save, get back here. And if I try to add a new task, let's say record YT video. I know the font is small, but you can see that we are able to access this information. Now this information can be used in different other ways. Maybe I just want to calculate the length. I can do that just to demonstrate the length. Or maybe I want to add a restriction that if I cross this length, I want to just pop up an alert. Remember, I can do that. So let's say I can use dot length. You can see it's 15 character. So that's how I can play with this information. I can just use this length for some reason if I want and just do an alert, something like this. So this is possible according to our need. Now the other thing is you don't need to create a new function for that. If you want, you can do this in a single line as well with the anonymous function and you can just say set task value and instead of passing it here, you can directly pass things here. And here you need to access that it can be E. So it is much readable. You are so you just don't need it. And if I save get back here, things are still working fine. That's it. I hope you got the idea. In the next lecture, let us try to explore more about it. Hey there, welcome back. Now in this lecture, let us try to have more control to our input and basically have a button to reset this input field. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to have a span tag and I'm going to apply a class which is going to be reset and I'm going to give it a value as reset. Remember, I'm not going to utilize a button because every time I click a button, it is going to refresh that page. Uh, then I need to involve event dot prevent default something like this. If you know JavaScript, you know, uh, it, it gets complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize this span and then reset option here. Simple. I've already applied this class, so it is going to look better. And what I need to do as soon as I click on it, I can have the option to on click. It is going to handle the reset. Awesome. Now here I just need to create that function, which is my handle reset. And what it is going to do is it is going to reset my value, which is my task value. I just need to utilize the set task value, provide an empty string, which is the original one, the initial one. And that's it. Let me save, get back here. Now if I type something here, let's say ABC reset, you can see this is cleared, but we still don't have a clearance here. How to clear this one? Well, for that, we need to provide a value and the value will be her task value basically. Why? Because we have control over this task value, which is our state. So if we clear this task value, if we reset this, it is going to basically reset our value. And if we set any type of value for our task value, it is going to set it here as well. So it's easy for us to control it now. Now, if I type something here, chances are you are going to get some error. Just refresh this. It will be fine. And once that is done, I can say ABC. If I click on reset, both are cleared now because they depend on task value. And here we are setting them as empty. Now, remember, if you have other field as well, maybe you have other input field. So you need to reset them as well. Remember this point. Maybe you have input field for uh, email and password then you need to create two state uh, one will be for email and then other one will be for password and at the time of setting these value you need to clear two values okay that's it that's all to handle this reset thing now here the important thing was to make you understand that we can use these values that's great so there are few things that i hope you got the idea we have on click when we can use this in our form we have on change, we can use this. Now there is one thing other, which is on submit. 
you see this button well this is going to create trouble at this point of time we are just playing with single single field but when we click on this submit button we have access to all the information from our form and we need to use that information in the next lecture we are going to discuss on that thank you for following i hope you got the idea how to utilize on click and clear some stuff on our form hey there welcome back now let us focus on submit button till now we understood about reset on change but it's good time for us to understand about this button which is going to help us submit information so all we have to do is when we are working with form we have option to use on submit and here we can mention the function where we need to submit our information so here i can have option let's say handle submit and all i have to do is take this one uh, create a function here i know i'm utilizing arrow function you can use the normal function things are going to remain same now here what i want when i submit is i want to access the information so there are two ways to access information either i can access the information directly with the help of my task value since i have stored this i have created a state here or i can utilize something like event and then access information about my uh, name remember this name it is going to be my task suppose i have other input field as well i can do that similarly for them suppose i have other input field as well so i will have access to that also with the help of name so that's how things are going to work so what i am going to do here is i am just going to access the information with task value so let's say i have this task which is going to be an object and i need name uh, suppose i'm adding this task here in my task list uh, something like this so i need a id i need name and i need completed something like this i need to create it when i'm going to submit so the first thing is i need an id let's say id for now is one two three then i need name which is going to be our task value awesome then i need to work with completed yep completed which by default i am going to say false because by default all our tasks should be pending now here what i am going to do is instead of hand coding any type of id i can utilize my math not my math but the math from javascript i can just use math dot random which is going to give me any number from 0 to 1 then i am going to multiply it by some digit so i can have i if i want four digit five digit depending on me let's say i want it, it is going to be suppose it is going to be 0 0.1 so if i multiply it by 10000 it will be four digit but then again it is not round off so what i am going to do is i am going to use math dot floor to round them off so this is how i am going to generate a random id for each task that i add and then for no reason let me just do console dot log which is going to be my task now if you can guess there is a problem remember we are working with a form we are working with a button and we are doing something there is a problem either you can pause and guess or in a second i will tell but i am here if i say a b c if i click on add task you can see my page just got refreshed so how to control that well we need to utilize our event with prevent default so i can say event and here i need to go with event dot prevent default that's it save get back here clear this up let's say a b c if i click on add task you can see i'm able to console it now currently i'm getting an error that my id is nothing there is not no id for now let's say what we are doing wrong oh i missed my random function actually let me save get back here let me try to this add it again now here you can see things are working fine i have a random id i have name i have completed 
Now it's recommended to have a bigger ID. So the chance of having the exact same number, same random number is decreased. The probability is rare already, but let's have maybe six digit, seven digit ID. So it's decreased, almost negligible. The other thing that we need to take care is that as soon as I add any type of form, this value should be cleared. For example, if I'm submitting some information, this should be clear. So what we can do is we can just clear this, this set. We can just set this or we can call this handle reset. If we only have one field, we can just set this. But if we have multiple fields, it's better to just call this function. Call this function. Uh, let me save get back here. And if I click on add, you can see now it's cleared. So that's how we can play with it. Now let's try to do one more fun stuff. Let me add one more field here since currently we are just working with one field, but it's great idea to add some other type of field here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to have a select option. Let's say I, I have the option to select that if the task is pending or completed. So I can just add an option and I can say if the task is completed or something like pending. With pending, I want to pass this as false. With completed, I want to pass this as true. So I can have a JavaScript value which is false and this can be true. Remember, we are going to access this value at the end of the day. This is just to show people, just to show user, just to show on our website. Uh, let me save, get here. Now here we need to work on the same problem which is to access this information. So let me first arrange this in a better format. Let me say this reset, it, uh, reset is on the top and the button here. And then here I need to create a new const and here then I need to create a new state and this time instead of task value it will be the situation, the progress value, something like this. Progress, something like this and set progress pending or complete. Uh, you can have any other term and by default I'm going to say it's false. So this is going to be the progress value and on change, I can just set the progress value I'm going to say set progress. I can access the event. And what I just need to do is access the event dot target dot value, whatever the value we change. Awesome. And then instead of false, I can just pass the value of my progress. Looks good to me. Let's see if we get any error. No error right now refresh things looks fine to me let me add a task abc this is great right now and we are not clearing the progress right now so let's say if i am adding a pending click on add task you can see 785 abc completed false okay looks good this is also set reset reset is done let's do something else let's say abc completed add task we have this task. This is true this time, but I think, but I think this is a string right now. We need to take care of this. The other thing is we need to reset this. This completed. If I click on reset, nothing is happening. So first we need to reset here, set progress, and we need to reset it to false. That should be the first step. And we also need to provide the value field here. So let's say, value which is going to be our progress looks good to me we followed the exact same step that we did earlier here with input okay get back here reset you can see it's pending so now if i say a b c if i say completed if i click on add task you can see everything is reset and this is fine the only thing we need to focus on this true part so first what I'm going to do is I am going to have a console log here. 
to access this value and see what we are getting and let me also remove this value let me save get back here clear this up let's say completed it's true pending it's false completed it's true so that means this value is correct the value that we are sending here so i can undo this so we are passing the correct value with our set progress i am going to do one quick test i am going to do a console log and i'm going to check the type of progress so i am just going to utilize type of and pass this here let me save and if i do any type of let me refresh clear a b c uh, it's completed if i add task it's string so the best thing i can do is convert into boolean so if i have this as boolean convert this progress save and let's try to have a b c let's pass completed add task now we have boolean this is great so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to set it here i know i confused you guys a lot but i was trying to show how thinking process work so what happened was when i was trying to save the progress it was saving it as string so instead of playing with anything else i just converted this string or whatever the response i'm getting into boolean so now if by any chance if this value comes as true or false as string it will convert it as boolean the other thing i can also do right now is now i can convert this into as a simple string because at the end of the day we are converting it into boolean let me save get back here i tried to be raw this time let's see if i say abc if it's pending let me add this task you see and see it's available here let me say abc again uh, let's say completed add this task it's working now one more thing i'm going to say abc completed reset things are working fine so that's how we are going to submit our task now there were three important points that we did we first understood how to submit without working on this button we worked on the form on submit method that was the first important task in this lecture the second one we were only working with input so what i did is i added a new field in the form of select because working with input was easy for us we did this earlier as well so the aim was to bring out a new field and work with submit with submit we try to work on on change so every time i'm working with a new field it is going to set the new state about this field which was progress great this worked well and we also uh, create a association so every time i need to clear stuff it would be easy so we have a value as progress the third thing was to handle all of the submit uh, we created a random id we stored this task and the other important thing we tried to convert stuff from one point to another that means to st from string to boolean that's it now we can remove this console.log now the only reason i am trying to save information in a task variable is in further lecture i want to add this task here so all of this and then comma a new task that we get from user or just remove this hand coded task and add our own task that's the main motive and that's what we are going to do in the next one thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us start our work to add a new task in our task list so at this point of time we have a different component for this and a different component for this but now we need to get some information from here and add it here okay this is going to be tricky what i mean by this is i have this task list and i need to add a new task that should be done from our add task so basically if i visualize this from our tree purpose our component tree purpose we have app and inside that app we have header we have add task we have task list and we have footer now we need to send some information from this task list to add task 
which is not possible they are sibling so what i am going to do is i am going to create these information here from my app and then i am going to pass inside both of them let me do that let me do simple stuff let me take this task from here create it here okay so now i have this task method so now i have information about the state as well as this set state now what i can do is i can simply pass this information i can pass this information here i can say just task which will be my task and then i am going to have set task which will be my set task and i can simply access both of them here my task and my set task awesome so for now everything is going to work as it is without any problem if i get back here okay we have a problem we haven't defined this u state so i can just get here click on control and space so i will get this suggestion and i click here so now you can see i got this import let me take this at the top awesome save get back here and things are working fine let me clear this refresh this yep things are working fine so that means since i am not able to share information with siblings i started the information from parent so i can pass to its child now i need all this information with add task as well why so i can call this set task and i i can add some other task and i can also access the previous task so what i am going to do get inside my add task and whenever i am going to submit this information okay first let me add it here which is going to be my task and set task okay so now whenever i am going to get a call for this submit information before resetting information i am going to say set task and i am going to add this new task and we are going to have a problem just wait a second so if i get here i get here i clear this i say a b c i add this task and i got an error well why this error the basic information you need to remember is this is a list the first thing and then inside this list we have an object and here what we are trying to pass directly an object no nope. so what we need to do we first need to have a list inside this list we need to pass an object again we are going to get a different type of result don't worry but let's see what happens right now save get back here clear all this stuff refresh okay now if i say a b c if i add this task you can see now i have this task i have this let's say random i uh, let's say completed add this task you can see i have this but i have cleared everything else why because i am setting this task i am passing this list and inside this i only have one object which is the newest one that i have so what i need to do is i also need to access the previous object with the help of my tasks that i access it here and then add the newest one or i can use push or concatenation to add this new task remember these are two different thing this is tasks which i access from the parent and this is task which we are creating here now let me try this one let's see if this works or not let me get here uh, refresh this i get the hand coded task let's say a b c let me add this task and you can see it's working fine let me say random add this task it's working fine so this is one way by which we can do here we are utilizing our information about arrays so i have the previous task i am adding them here by spreading them and then my task why i am doing this because this is a list itself it will open up like this otherwise so by using dot 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 i remove this and i only get the inside content so it will be like this and then the new task which will be another object like this so i hope you got the idea what we actually did
here we are just resetting the task with previous information and with new information okay let's save now what i am going to do is i am going to clear this manual coded information so it's an empty list now save get back here if someone visit this page as a fresh user they will have option to add task let's say record react lectures i am in pending state i am currently doing that and click on add i got one you can also keep an eye on these ids let's say edit this lecture pending add this awesome keep an eye on ids as well and let's say rewatch this let's say view videos something like this this is completed suppose if i click on add you can see that's how we are going to do so this is one way of doing all this stuff and now i'm not using any hand coded stuff it is empty so that means by default if i visit the page everything will be empty and i'm adding a new task by default on the first run this is empty uh, i got no item so i added a new task on the second second run what i had is i was having one object and then i added a new task on the third run i had two objects and added a new task something like this this was important i know there are chances that you might feel okay this was easy or there are chances that you might feel okay this was hard you don't have to worry i just hope now you understand this it can be easy it can be hard but you should understand this now that's great there is one thing that i want to talk about that if i refresh this everything is gone nope we don't have any information why because we are not saving this anywhere we are saving this in a form of state which just clear up as we refresh so remember this point that everything we are doing right now is not saved anywhere either we can use local host or if in future we work with some back end maybe some firebase database we can store that there right now it's nowhere so that's great one information also i want to talk about like save all of these thing inside main so i'm not going to save this it's not saved right now so if i visit this is the current state the problem is my footer is hanging in between so i have my header my add form my display task and then this footer this should be at the bottom right so what i did is i keep all my section remember this add task is a section remember this part it's a section this task list is also a section so this main contains all the section of my website and this main itself is 90 vh in height so if i save get back here now you can see the footer is at the bottom why because of the css if i open the css it's simple thing i'm just going to give take a few seconds so the minimum height is 90% of my screen and the width is 1200 pixel margin is auto so it will be at center and then some spacing the only reason i am taking this is so my footer is at the bottom and and the important thing if i right click here talk about the structure of html i have my header i have my main and then i have my footer inside main i have all my section it can be any other section so i have a structured page now this might not impact right now but as we grow our project as we have multiple pages these structure are important so that's all i hope you got the idea one final thing that i want to do is get into my public folder get into my index and here i have option to change stuff like my title i can say task list or task mate whatever my project name is right now let's say task mate react app so my title will be updated i can also change my favicon my logo and all the other information that we will do in our project but that's it it's basically a project only now you have a full fledged website with a form and a display functionality let's say a b c uh it's in pending state add let's say x y z it's in completed state add and if i delete this if i delete this everything is working fine awesome 
that's all for this one in the next one i'm going to talk about a new hook that is going to simplify our life much more so i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now in this lecture let us discuss about a hook called as use ref now remember this hook help us to create some reference to any particular field but that field that value should not be rendered what i mean by this is i can create a reference to this particular field but i cannot render it at currently we are rendering this value right i cannot do that let's take an example and understand about it currently all our reference all our rendering is done with the help of this task value so i'm going to comment this out and i'm going to import use ref here use ref and let's create this reference i'm going to call this reference as let's say const and i'm going to call this as task value yep and here i'm going to use my reference awesome now we have created this reference but it is not attached anywhere we need to attach it we need to attach it with a value maybe it can be input it can be select or anywhere else so we need to attach this value so i'm going to take this value here i'm going to scroll down and remember i can provide a initial value as well so if i have something like a initial default value suppose i am working with a age field or something like this pending field so i need to have a default value of false i can do that remember here we had the default value something like this or even a empty string i can create this default value awesome so first i need to create this reference so suppose i am creating reference with my input so what i am going to do is i am going to remove this value and i am going to add my reference and the reference was task value or i should give a different name so I, we don't get confused let's say task ref task ref so now i'm this task don't confuse this with this one it's entirely different hook so i have this task reference and i have created a connection with my input field which is this one so that means now any time i need information about this input field i can do that with the help of this task reference this task ref i can get it value i can reset it whatever i want to do let's do some stuff so here i was trying to print out the change something like this so suppose if i want to access this value let's say console log uh, my task ref i am not going with event remember i can go with my task reference i can say dot current or uh, let me try to print this one first which is my task reference and also comment all of this task value thing otherwise i'm going to get an error let me save get back here uh, there is at task 19 and 13 which is this let's say abc and this okay let me remove now let me get back here click on inspect get back to my console clear this now if i say a b c you can see i am getting some information about this input and i have this current inside this i have a value about a b c so that means with the help of this task ref i can access its value i can access the reference value anytime i just need to get into my current and then the value if i save get back here clear this and if i say a b c you can see a b c now i do i can do this anywhere if i need to reset if i need to do anything all i have to do is get into my this value of current and i can say empty string so if i need to do that i can get here and let's say a b c and if i reset you can see the value is gone but 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 the problem is i cannot render it suppose i can pass this information now here i have this task ref current value this is working fine this reset is working fine 
I don't even need this handle change now because I don't need to save a task value. I can just remove this, comment this and this reset is working fine. This submit is working fine, but I cannot print this. I cannot render this actually. So if I save and also remove this, save, get back here, you can see this render is not working, but if I click on add a task, you can see I'm able to add this task, but the render is not going to work. So let me give you a quick revision. What was this? So use ref is a hook that help us to create a reference point to any element, whichever element we want. And then we can access its information anytime. We can change its information anytime we want. But the only thing is we cannot render it. You can see that's not needed for rendering something like this. It's there. We can provide our initial information, create this reference. If you see, they have interval reference, they give it a zero value and then they have access to the current. They do all the stuff, but the important information is that how to create this reference. You can just say ref and then provide the value. And then we, since we are working with this current, we have a different type of option. If it's an input field, we can work with focus and all the other stuff. The only two pitfall is that you cannot rewrite the current. We can rewrite the value, but not the current. And also we cannot render it. I hope you got the idea. I really wanted to talk about this hook and I thought it will integrate well with this example. So that's all. And I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back, Shobham this side and it's time to level up. Till now we have been discussing about some simple components, we have been discussing about states and we focus more towards UI part that is how to structure our component and design few basic stuff, understand about CSS. So we have been doing well. But now let's dive deep with core topics. So. In this section, as well as in the next section, we are going to juggle up some advanced topic. We'll be talking about how to create our own API in front end as well. So we can test stuff. We'll be talking about different hooks and we are going to create our own hook. That means a custom hook. So we are going to juggle some core topics and this is going to be much tougher than whatever we did till now. So get ready to level up the first thing. We are going to talk about JSON server. It's a package that help us to create our own API. Now, one thing I need to tell you that API is usually developed by backend. We just get it. We start working on it. So what happened is when we start working on front end, we don't usually have an API because API is handled by backend team. What we need to do is we need to create fake API. We need to have some sort of links. We need to have some sort of response so we can test our front end project. That's where this whole JSON server come into picture. We can define our own APIs, define our own data and do lot of stuff. Now this JSON server or fake API is not restricted to this section or next section. We are going to utilize it in lot of projects as well as in lot of concept because in real world you play a lot with API. Each website play a lot with API and for that we have a solution. We have our own server now. We can create any type of API, test out the result, build out designs and use our code react concept. So all you have to do is get on to npmjs.com, search about JSON server. You will get onto this page. Lot of information are here. Also click on the GitHub link. You will get all the information about the code source as well as step-by-step -step tutorial. Don't worry. We are going to cover it. But if you want to read, here is the complete process. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to install it on our global level. Now what I mean by global level, well, other apps also can utilize our JSON server. So we are now going to play with APIs. But before that, let us create our new project so we can experiment things from basics. What I'm going to do, get inside my practice folder and here I'm going to have npx. Remember npx. And then I just need to use create react 
app and then I'm going to call the project as shopmate no reason you can call it anything else I'm trying to create an API to demonstrate or display different product so let's say shopmate press enter it is going to take few minutes to create our folder now let me fast forward the entire installation process and then open my VS code. This looks fine. Okay, now I need to just change the folder. Let me get into change directory and get into shopmate. Looks good. Get into my VS code, which is code dot Yep, here it is. We have our basic structure. I just need to do a quick cleanup. Let me remove my setup test. Then I need to remove this report web vital. Also remove our SVG. Then I have this test file. Okay, this cleanup is done. Get here, remove all the unwanted code. Save and then get into our app. Remove the entire header as well as svg looks good to me now what i'm going to do open our terminal and here i just need to go with npm start uh, currently we are going to get an empty page since we don't have any content inside our app so what i'm going to do i am going to have a h1 tag and let's say hello world let me save, get back here. Things are looking fine to me right now. So let's talk about our JSON server. What we need to do? Well, we just need to install this. So all I need to do, copy this one. Either I can install here or I have uh, my terminal inside VS code. Anything will work fine. So let me pause the server, install this one. Okay, the installation is done. Now if I get into my package.json, I'm not going to get this JSON server because this was global. So if I get here, uh, if I look here, you don't see the JSON server, but you will have access to JSON server. Don't worry. If you mention the dependency, it will be added here. Basically, I just want to show that it's not here, but it is still going to work since it's global. Okay, now let's get back here. What we need to do is we need to have a db.json. We can define all type of links or API endpoints that we want. And then we just need to run that server. Now here you need to remember one important point that this JSON server will be on port 3000 by default. And our React app is also on port 3000. So there are chances that we get an error. Because of that, we need to change port for at least one of them. But before that, let's create the step. Let's create a data file. Let's say data. Inside this, I'm going to have my db.json. And inside this, I'm going to mention all the information. So basically what happened here is we just need to create an object and we just need to define our endpoint. It can be about our product, our user. We can define multiple of them. So let's say I'm going to have a uh, products endpoint and then I just need to provide a list and then each individual object. So this can be my product one, product two, and then the entire information. Now, if I want to add another endpoint, I am going to have this link. I am going to define it. Maybe I want to define featured product, which is going to be a different list. So feature products and I can do some similar task. Uh, it is going to be less than each individual product. So that's how we can define stuff. Now, why I'm telling this right now, because it is going to be bulky once we start adding multiple products. So let's add here. I'm going to define things myself only. So let's say I, okay, 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 okay. Let me format this properly. Yeah, this is my first product. So let's say I have a product and then I'm going to have a ID. Remember this is JSON and not JS. It's JSON, not JavaScript. So you will see these quotes. Yeah, so I'm going to have a ID, let's say one, 10,001. Then I need name for that particular product. Uh, 
I am going to have a name. Uh, suppose I am creating a e-commerce, so or I am creating a course website or ebook website, something like this. So suppose I have a um, ebook website. So I have this ebook, which is basics to advanced in React. Uh, these are the two information, and then I have an option about price. Uh, let's say it's for twenty nine dollars. And the other information I want to include is maybe rating, maybe stock or something like this. So I can just say in stock and it is going to be true if the product is available, something like this. Now I can add multiple of them because it's easy now to add copy paste. Uh, let's say two, let's say three. Let me add another one. Let's say four. Let me copy paste some name. Okay, this looks fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this as false. So later on we can have some differentiation. This as 19, this as maybe 49, this as again 49, this as 99, something like this. That's it. This is great. We have a proper product link API endpoint which if we hit this endpoint we are going to get these four products awesome let me save and for now i'm going to close this one i'm going to open my terminal and here currently you see this is just one terminal so if i say npm start i'm going to block this one so how i'm going to start a server for my json well for that we can create a new terminal let's select the new terminal you can see we can switch them and this is running behind the scene and I can just switch to new terminal and here I just need to call this command. Uh, if I jump here, uh, JSON server watch db.json. But here we need to do some change. The first thing is it will be data slash db.json because we kept this uh, db file inside our data folder. The other thing is we need to run on a different port. So let's say JSON server watch then data slash db dot json this actually start from the root folder and then i need to go with dash dash port space 8000 and if i run this one you can see now this is working fine and what if i copy this one actually get here and try to open this one Awesome, this is working fine. I'm going to zoom it a bit. The other thing you are going to see is this tab. This is because I'm using an extension. Otherwise, you are not going to see in this proper way or this color format. So for that, I recommend an extension called as JSON Formatter. You can access it for free through extension store. Just install it and then you will have things formatted. So now this is an API endpoint. We can hit on this endpoint and we can get any type of information. Now, not just this endpoint, JSON server give access to lot other power. For example, if I say slash 10001, which is basically my product ID, this ID, I am going to get information specifically for that product. So that means if we have individual product page, we can handle this. If I have this, you can see I get information about my second product. Not only this. We have functionalities like search and other thing as well. So if I scroll down here, you can see this uh, first product, something like this. We just did. So we can get this information. We can send a post request, put request, patch as well as delete request. And the important point is that we can get deep properties. Uh, maybe we want to search something. Maybe we want to get specific titles. We can do that. And we can also sort things according to their price or something else. So for example, if I need to sort according to the price point. So all I have to do is add parameter question mark and here I can sort according to the price. Currently it's ascending. So you can see now uh, this is $19, 49, 49 and 99. So that's how you are going to sort things. Now you might not use this right now just in the next section or in this section. I'm informing you this because maybe you work in a bigger project. 
So this is going to help you a lot with fake API. One thing you might see me using a lot is underscore like. It's basically a search functionality. So for example, if I have something like name and you can see I am, I am having the suggestion name and then underscore like equals to and maybe I have something like react. If I pass this information, it is going to search and find all the product that includes the term react. Currently, we don't have many products. Let me add one more that includes the term react. Basically, let me minimize this and add a new product. Let's say five uh, build a blockchain from scratch in react. Uh, okay. And price is 199 say get back here if i refresh this you can see now the search react is giving me two result so this is super powerful and if i just remove the react it is going to give me all the items because there is no search term so i'm getting access to all item and you can also use and and then specify a multiple condition and that is going to work great you can have a full text search uh, with q equals to which is your query and lot more stuff you are not going to utilize all of all of this together right now but as you progress you might see me using this in different projects or you start utilizing this whole power for your own projects so that's all that's all the information i wanted to give you about this json server so there are a few things that i need to remind you the first thing that we are running two terminals the first one is for our react app and the second one is for our json server this json server is independent and it has no relation to our react app we kept this in a same folder so it's easy for us otherwise you can create any folder maybe in desktop or anywhere else you just need to run this command in that particular folder currently my data file was inside my shopmate so i call this whole thing inside this shopmate if my data file was on practice folder, I will call this JSON server inside that practice folder. Remember this point. It has nothing to do with our React app. If our React app doesn't exist, if we delete our app, only this folder exists, we can still run our JSON server and things will work fine. It's on different port. Remember this point. We are treating this as a different backend. So that's the first point. We are now running two different server for our React app and then for our JSON. The other important point that now we have our endpoint. We can call individual element if we want. We can try to search according to our name for any specific term. And we can also arrange item according to ascending, descending for any particular price or any other parameter that we want. So that's all. I hope you got the idea. Now we are going to get into our React app and start calling this fake API, take some response and play with it. So that's the aim from now. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us start our task to call the API and access the information and then create a UI to display that information. What I mean by this is we are going to utilize fetch API, the native JavaScript one. So that means we can call this API, our product API, get information. Now we are going to have that information. We are going to store that information to some type of state and then display it. So before diving deep into all of this, let me create a new file or I should say folder and call this as components. Inside this, I'm going to have my product list component. And inside this, we are going to do everything. I also need to import this here. Uh, let me get here, go with import. It will be product list. You can just have uh, control space. It will give you all the information. So that would be much easier and let me add it here. So it will be product list save. If I get back here, you can see now I have this product list. 
Also one thing I am going to do is I am going to add a h1 tag here and just call product list. So I have some type of heading. Yep. Inside this I am going to do all my task which is to utilize our state or all the concept that we are going to learn in this whole section. So the first thing, first simple thing is we need to call the fetch API, get information of all the stuff and understand more, right? So the first thing we need to do is call the fetch API and demonstrate our product inside our return. So here what I'm going to do is I am going to have my const, I'm going to have my products and then set products. So this is going to be the list of products that I'm going to utilize and show here. By default it is going to be empty array simple. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize fetch. This is going to take our URL. So let me copy this one. Get back here. Now this is going to send us a response. And if you remember we can use dot then and here I'm utilizing the chaining and it will be a promise. So let's say I got the response and then I just need to get it in the form of JSON. So response dot JSON. Awesome. And then I just need to utilize that data. This is all JavaScript stuff. And let's say console.log and get that data. Awesome. Let me save, get back here. You can see I got this information. And if I open, I have all the five products. Now this looks fine. Let me also do one more thing. Let me add a console.log here and here I'm going to go with my products. So it's easy because at the end of the day, our task is to get information, everything inside our products. Get back here. You can see I got an empty array about my products and here I have information about my data. So what I can do is I can store all the information inside our product using our set products. And then I can just use this product to display everything, right? Yep. Let's do that. Let me copy this one, add it here. Remember I haven't saved it yet. You can see the dot, uh, a quick disclaimer, please don't try this. Your system is going to hang. Don't try this. I'm using 64 GB system and still you are going to see what is, what is going to happen right now. So what we are going to do is we are going to call this set product, send this information. And then what happen is when we just save or update the state, it is, it is going to reevaluate everything from top to bottom. You remember we re-render things, right? So when we update any type of state, it re-evaluate everything. So that means it is going to console log. It is going to call the API again, set the product again console log, call the API again, set the product again. Now, since we set product again, it is going to reevaluate in the process of reevaluate. We call this again and it is going to be an infinite loop. Let me show you. Let me save this one, get back here. And here you can see it's infinite loop. You it's, it is going to, it is not going to stop. So first I need to undo this step. Let me save now. And I don't know if it is saved or not. It is still going because I guess the call was maybe for 10,000 time. So it's still going. You can imagine it's still going. And if I give you a demo inside the terminal, you can see it's going nonstop. And here I have stopped it, but it's still going. The only solution I think right now is either to stop the server for a moment and rerun this. And this is a major issue. So let me stop the server, both servers. Let me start this again. Let me start this again. Things are much better now. All the old calls are stopped because we are not calling or updating our product. So it's not re-evaluating everything. Let's get here. Let's get here again and talk about what we just did. So I'm not going to save this time. I'm just going to give you an idea. So what happened is when we try to update any type of state, it reevaluate our entire component and it also re-render the stuff that required to have new information. 
If you remember our counter example, then we also did with our task. So we got some experience, but at the time of re-evaluation, we call this API basically and it perform all these steps. The problem is now we are inside an infinite loop. Currently we are using this free API that we created. Suppose if this was a paid API, we are, if we are paying any company to use their service, <laughs> this is going to cost a lot. Because if you, you can see, we literally did some thousands of call in a single minute. So to restrict that, we have something called as use effect. Now we need to remember this use effect in relation to side effect. When we are dealing with side effects, we use use effect. Okay, I know the rhyming is bad, but I'm trying to make a connection so you remember. So what use effect do is, it give us power to call something once at the time of mounting or at the time of loading or call it again when we want or when we have some change. I'm going to explain in a bit, but I recommend you to jump onto the documentation. You will have a quick idea about what I'm trying to have. You will get a quick idea about its syntax. Don't worry, I'm going to show it. The new documentation is currently under construction. So I'm going to refer to the previous one. Things are still going to work the same way. So what we need to do is we need to utilize use effect and whatever the thing that we need to take care uh, like this, we keep them inside use effect. Okay. So let's take this, let's remove and keep this on the top. Okay. Now what use effect do is it's just a method, a simple method, which take two information. The first is the function that we need to call to do certain task. It can be a fetch thing. It can be anything else. It will be inside this whole code block. The second thing is when we need to run this, do we need to run this once? Do we need to run this multiple times or do we need to take care about any uh, any other dependencies. So we need to pass that dependency list. I am going to explain with practical example. Don't worry. I'm just trying to explain the syntax. This is the first argument that we need to pass. And this is the second one. Okay. Yeah. Now inside this code block, we can perform anything that we want. For example, I'm going to say console.log and here I'm going to say mounted. Let me save. Let me also remove this console log. Let me save. Let me refresh. And here you can see I got mounted twice. Awesome. There's one more thing that we are not going to utilize right now, but we have the option to return and it is, it can return anything. I'm just going to return something like, uh, unmounted. Okay. Let me save, get back here again, clear this up, refresh, mounted, unmounted, mounted, unmounted. So that's how this works. Basically, we have a return statement. It will call it by the end. Okay. We don't need to use this right now. Our focus is to understand use effect. Okay. So use effect will be called once when our dependency is empty. So that means anything we want to do right now, we will do it inside here. So suppose if we want to have fetch. So we are going to do all the fetch task inside here because it will be called only once. Yep, you heard it right. We call this, we have this information. We try to set the product. That's it. Now, next time, if we are going to reevaluate our component, this will not be called because the dependency is not there. If we try to add any type of dependency, it will see if that is changed or not. For example, if I have something like maybe a count, suppose if I have a count here for no reason, I'm taking zero and I have a dependency of count here. Now in future, if this count is changed, use effect is going to call this function. So if we have any type of other information, it's not just for fetch. We can have our console. We can have other function, anything. If count is changed, that means that's the dependency. If count is changed, we are going to call this again, this whole function again. So that is the meaning of this dependency. And if it's empty, that means at the time of 
mounting this at the time of evaluating this for the first time loading this page we call this no worries if you don't understand this we are going to work with this whole concept for next few lectures so don't worry we have lot of example and uh, let's try to do some stuff let's try to have products here let me save get back here try to clear this up try to refresh now you can see i got empty array uh, the initial one and then what i did is i got the information so that's how use effect help us to have a function that can be called once or called multiple times if we create any dependency now in the next lecture let us try to understand this more with the other examples and also create a simple ui with the information that we are trying to have which is data now why i am storing this information in products so i can access this information inside my jsx otherwise i can console it i can have it in a variable but as soon as i am out of the function the variable scope is empty so i need to store inside state because state can be accessed anywhere inside our component so that's the reason we utilize state as well okay that's great i know i stretched this lecture a bit but now let's continue with the ui in the next one hey there welcome back shubham this side now this is going to be an interesting lecture because we are going to talk about a common doubt that you might get that uh, i'm just loading my page once but why i am getting this information again and again like i loaded it once so that means i should have console log and then i do use effect and then console log again why well at the time of loading we got the console log then we updated our product and we again got the console log because of the reevaluation so that means my result should be an empty array and then a filled array that's it why i am getting this twice and this four time well there are two specific reason the first one let me remove this use effect for now so we can focus on the first one so if i save this one if let me empty this and if i refresh this you can see that we got this two times why well when we use this react strict mode it render everything twice now remember this react strict mode is only for development so that means if you are going to deploy your project on any server this is not going to affect your project will only render once but when we are on a local system when we have a local deployment server it is going to render twice if i remove this suppose if i remove this save and if i clear this one refresh now you can see we only render for once so that happened behind the scene that means this react strict mode render or mount our component multiple times let's say twice and that's why you see this console log two times you might see this doubt in future as well so that's why i'm trying to clear it right now the other thing is if i'm using a use effect why i'm getting this so many times let me clear refresh now you can see you understand this is twice but why this four times well the problem is when we are in a development phase use effect also call it twice yep if you remember in the previous one i talked about mount unmount and then mount again what happened with use effect is it's call everything here then call the return method and then call this again use effect call itself twice when we are in development phase so what happened behind the scene is we call this twice and use effect also mounted twice so that's four time so that's why you are seeing this result you don't need to do the math but this is happening because we are in react strict mode react strict mode mount twice and then use effect mount twice that's why we are seeing this for four times and seeing this to for two times uh, if you want to dive deep more you can search about uh, react component mounting twice you will get some information about it you can also set it false or with next js or any other framework or uh, you can just remove this also about use effect you will see this error this is something new actually 
Also with use effect, you will get this information that how to handle the effect firing twice in development. Remember, this is only for development, not with production. So you will see when you are working on a local system. I know there are students who might be confused with this count, but don't worry, we are in a development phase only. So if I just remove this, suppose if I save, get back here, if I clear stuff, refresh, you can see now it's only once. How once? We first evaluate, we console log the empty state, get inside our use state, we set the product, get inside the reevaluation mode and now we have our filled array. So we uh, console log the filled one. Now we skip this one because it was only for once and that's it. So if you get here, the first one is about empty and then we reevaluate with a filled one. So this is how things happen in server. But since we are in development, this should be like this. Yep. So if you want to explore more about this in future, I will recommend searching about this, which is component mounted twice react or some similar term like this. You will get multiple answers about the use effect firing twice again. It's new. It's only for development phase and it's only available on the new react doc. And there are very few blogs that talk about it because it's new. I'm just recording after the update of react. So that's it. You don't need to change anything. You just need to be informed that why this happened and what is the science behind it. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us complete the user interface for our use effect. So I am going to keep all my CSS inside app.css only. So they are at one place and we can focus more on concept and less on the CSS part right now. I hope you know how to keep CSS. You can create individual CSS file and then import them later. Uh, we should focus more on react concept. So the first thing is now we have access to all the product inside our products state. So what I can do is I can first create a section here since it's a component, it will be easy for us to manage. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to access my products. Okay, great. I am going to utilize my map and then inside this, I will have access to each one of them. Now, remember, if you are trying to use curly braces, you need to use a return and then something like this. Or if it's a single line, then you don't need to use return. You can use directly this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a P tag and just go with my product name. So let's say the individual item that we are selecting inside products is product. Let's have it here. Product dot name. Remember this is inside my map. So I'm trying to use my dynamic expression. Let me save, get back here and you can see I got a warning about the key. We are going to solve this, but here you can see I got all the names. Super. One thing I need to do, I need to remove the console log. The other thing I should focus is this whole information. So we have information about ID, name, price and stock. Great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div and call this as card and inside this I'm going to have a p tag awesome and since this is the parent of this whole thing that means the individual product I'm going to have a key here because this is the individual one and I can select product dot id the other thing I need to do is I am going to create a p tag again and inside this I will have a span tag and I will go with product.price and the next thing I need is let's say this is on new line it will be about if product is in stock or not so in stock something like this it is going to return true and false right so if this is true we are going to say in stock if this is false or we can say out of stock or unavailable something like this
let me save and I also need to demonstrate the ID so I can say P and here I can go with product ID. Let me save it back here. Uh, you can see I got the information. I got this and got this and got this. Okay, I still need to add all the class name that I have. So here I can have a class name directly and I can call this as ID. Yep, the class name is ID. Here I can have a class name. I can call it as name. Then here I'm going to call this as info. That's it. And I can also add a class name according to my product in stock and out stock. So what I'm going to do is I am going to have something like this. If it's in stock, I should have in stock. Otherwise it will be unavailable. So that means my class name will be dynamic and let me save get back here. Now we have five item with all the information. I'm using the CSS so this looks a bit presentable. Now one thing I need to quickly add is a dollar symbol. Now remember this dollar symbol I'm adding for this one. You can use any other currency. I'm adding this not as JavaScript but as a currency symbol. Okay looks great to me. Now we need to focus on the concept for which we are designing this. So the first thing we need to focus is that everything that we are going to access here is from this particular link. Now at this point of time it's a stable link but there are chances that we might need to update it. Maybe we are trying to search some information or maybe we are trying to filter it. If you remember the initial example we can access information according to maybe uh, descending to ascending or maybe we want to access information about only stock items or all the products. So we can do that and for that we need to change this URL. Also we can have different type of other method to fetch. If you remember we can use async await instead of using this fetch and then dot then and dot then again and again. We can utilize the async await method. So that's what we need to understand in next one that how to utilize a URL and how to use this async await and which type of function I am going to use. So thank you for following. The main aim of this lecture was to quickly design a simple UI so we have presentable information. Hey there, welcome back. Now let's start playing with the information. So what I mean by this is that we currently have this single URL, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a const and I'm going to have something like URL and then set URL. Great and by default I'm going to have it simple which is for all product. Basically what I want to do is I want to have a button when I by default it is going to be all product but I should have option to have only stock product. I can remove them. So I'm going to do that by default this is going to be all product and this is going to be the URL. Okay let me save get here things looks fine to me right now. Okay one quick thing get here and talk about the URL. So I need ins underscore stock as true that means all the product which currently holds true in terms of in stock this is going to be my url okay so let me get back get here and if i need to change it all i have to do is work with button so i'm going to have button and i am say i can say all and uh, let's say on click i can call a function i'm going to have an anonymous function which is going to say set my url to something and then I am going to have other button uh, let's say in stock only and I should have option for on click and here I am going to update my set URL to something which is this. Now here we are trying to play with our API and other information that we have. 
So this is going to be the default one. If I save, get here, all in stock. Nothing is working right now. Why? Why we are not updating this? If I click on in stock, my URL is updated, right? Why I don't have information? Remember, this use effect depends on dependencies. By default, we have empty dependency. That means we are just loading this for the first time. That's it. Now, if we want to have a dependency like this here URL, so we can add it here. Now, every time the URL is updated, they will recall this entire code block. Okay. Now, if I save, get back here, you can see in stock. If I say all, I have all the item. If I say only stock, you can see that's how this is going to work. And I hope now you understand how things are working. So I hope you got the idea why this dependency is important. Let me do one quick change as well. Let me say div and add a class as filter and keep these two button inside this. Let me save, get back here. Now you can see these two are here. Only stock, all, only stock, all. So that's how this is going to work. Now we can add multiple other information inside this. This is not just the one part. We can add more information if we want. Maybe we have other functions, we can do that. The other thing is you can have multiple use effect. Let me take a quick example. Let's say I have a const and here I have a counter and then I'm going to have a set counter. Uh, this is going to be some random example because I need to, I need to explain this point. So let's say start from zero and here I'm going to take some random button. Let's say button. And the thing is I need to just increase the counter. So I am going to have a counter that is going to display the number and then I am going to have on click function which is just going to set my counter to counter plus one something like this. If I get here you can see this is working fine. Now what I want is every time I uh, have a difference in counter, I should console log it. So what I can do, I can have a console log here. Uh, my counter thing, something like this. Now if I change it, it's not here. I don't have any information. So what I can do, maybe I can add a second dependency counter. Let me save, get back here. Now if I change it, this is working, but the problem is now this is also rendering again and again. So what we can do is we can have a second use effect just for the counter. So what I can do, I can just remove it from here. I can remove this counter here. I can just have a second use effect that is going to take two argument. The first one will be the function and the second one will be the dependency, which will be my counter. And here the function is going to just do a console log. Now let me save this one, get back here, clear this up. Remember to remove uh, our dependency from here, get back. Now if I just do this, so that means it is doing a console log, but it is calling just the use effect related to this counter. That means we can have multiple use effect according to our own dependency. If I add multiple dependencies here, that means entire code block will rerun. So if we are fetching, we are going to send a new request every time our counter is changed that we don't want. We want to have a console log for that counter. Okay, great. Now here I took console log. It can be anything else. Maybe we need to send some information. Maybe we are doing something else or calling some function. So the aim was to make you understand that we can have a second counter. The other thing that we understood that we have buttons that can change our URL and when URL is changed, we can get updated information and once the information is updated, we have a new render. So that's how this is going to work. So that's all. I hope you got the two important point of this lecture. Thank you for following. Now in the next one, 
let us discuss on our fetch again. Hey there, welcome back. Now in this one, let us focus on our use effect. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the counter because this example is done. So we don't need them. So yeah, let me save, get back here. Things looks fine to me. Now let's focus on the use effect. Currently we are just utilizing the fetch, but it can be a function or it can be anything else. So let's take a condition. The first condition which is going to work is let me take this out. Let me convert things into a function. Let me say I have a function which is fetch products and it's a simple function. Uh, it's an async function because at the end of the day, we are going to utilize await and return promise maybe. So this is a simple function which is going to have a response for our fetch request. And here we are passing the URL. And then again, we are going to have data. And I just need to convert the response into JSON. Looks good. And then I'm going to set my product with the data. Yep, great. So we have the function and we are trying to set the data. Get back here, refresh. Everything is gone. Why? because we never call this function. So let me call this here. We just defined this, but never called it. Let me do this here. Great. Let me save, get back here. Things are working fine again. Only stock is working All it's working. One simple change that I want to do with my data here is let me try to have this as well as false. So we, it's easy for us to view. Let me save, get back here, refresh. So now these are three and these are two. Click here. Yeah, it's much easy to visualize. Yeah, so this is great. This is the first condition in which we have a function inside a use effect and we are calling it. Things are great. We haven't got any error. Let me try to add a console log in case these are running multiple times. So we have information and it's only running for once. Great. Now let's get here. The second condition in which function is outside of our use effect, which is the most common one, because we are not going to define things inside use effect. We want it outside so we can call it multiple times anywhere. Or maybe we have this function somewhere else in a different folder, different directory, different file. I'm trying to importing it and then calling it here. It can be any type of function. Maybe we have a function to update our title, something like this one, this title. So maybe we have a function somewhere else and we are trying to call it on the load or every time there is some change. So if this is the case, let me save, get back here, refresh. This looks fine to me. But the problem here is if I open this one, you can see that our react hook use effect has a missing dependency fetch product either include or remove the dependency array so what is this what is this whole thing it's a warning that can create trouble at the time of deployment now what is the situation here is that we have a function outside of use effect and we are calling it it is going to work it is surely going to work if i say in stock things are fine all things are fine. So this is working. Everything is working fine, but we need to add this fetch product or we need to remove this. This is working fine because currently we know that this fetch product should be updated when we update the URL. This is known to us. That is why things are working fine. But at the end of the day, we don't have URL inside this directly. So let me remove this. Why I'm adding this here. Let me save, get back here now. Now things are going to be troubled. We have this on first load, the empty dependency. But now if I update the URL, things are not working. There is no change. We have unavailable products still there. What is the problem? Well, the problem is we need to add the dependency. And in this case, the dependency is fetch product. If you see react hook 
use effect has a missing dependency which is fetch product we know that we need to refresh this stuff on url update but in real world scenarios we don't define this inside here so we usually what we do is we say okay if we change our product uh, simply just pass this pass this dependency but then we are going to get up trouble if you see now we have i don't know how many times this is going to run but let me first stop it let me save and yeah stop so we ran this for 276 time what happen is when we try to have a dependency it can be a array it can be an object it can be a function these dependencies are going to run for infinite time because when we have url we can compare this string value from its previous one or the new one that we are trying to change so if i change the url to slash one we know that we can have we have some previous value to compare but when we have fetch product which is a function we cannot compare two functions will always be different because their reference memory reference is different two list two arrays two objects will always be different at the time of comparison why because their memory address are different when we reevaluate this the memory address for this fetch will be different from the previous one the memory address will be different their reference is different so that means this is going to run infinite time if i add it here so we are going to reevaluate we are going to give it a new memory address so this is going to call again reevaluate new memory address call again reevaluate new memory address call again and this is going to be infinite time so what is the solution in these cases the solution is to use our hook use callback i'm going to explain this in a minute but what if we are using arrays or object then we have a solution related to use ref i'm going to explain all of them but in a sequence the first case was clear we have a function inside this we are calling it inside this things are working fine because we had access to the url we passed it here now we are trying to call some function inside this but we need to pass its dependency so if i try if i'm trying to pass this product it is going to give me an error so to solve this to solve the infinite loop that we just understood we are going to utilize use callback now how to use that well i have the solution let me get on to the documentation which is under construction so let me go back to the old one now use callback is basically cached version of our function so every time we reevaluate our component instead of referring to the new memory address we will have access to the previous one so even if we compare both of them this one and the new one they are going to stay same uh, if you get here you can see it returns a callback and if i get here to this term you can simply have information that we have a cached result okay so what we need to do let me explain all we need to do is get here use our callback then this is going to take a function which we need to call the second thing it is going to do the dependency for that function for this particular function so this function is dependent on url let me save this and this is the function that we need to execute which is here awesome this looks good to me now every time there is a function on which we are dependent on we just utilize the use callback now if i get here and also inside my use effect let me pass this dependency and let me save get back here get back here clear this up refresh you can see i'm only doing it once in stock it's working all it's working in stock it's working all it's working so what we did is we covered the entire fetch product with use callback along with the dependency the dependency is the url here remember we need this use callback only when our function is outside of use effect otherwise we can just define this function normal function inside it and call it or we can just directly use all the information inside this 
we don't need this we just need this complication when our function is outside this is a case which i want to discuss so i created a scenario otherwise you don't need this also whenever you are trying to use the hook make sure you import it from the top looks good to me we talk about two three cases the first one was we were directly using fetch inside our use effect the second one was we defined the function inside use effect evoked it inside that only everything was good but as soon as we got the function outside then we got in trouble because now this dependency is not equal this is changing every time we will get a new memory address for our function to solve this we now have a use effect that is going to hold the cached version now since this is a cached version our function is going to remain same but the problem is our function will not change even when we change url so to solve this we added a dependency i know this was complicated but you will get used to it as we practice more remember this dependency is important for our use callback as well so thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back shubham this side now in this lecture let us discuss about how to create a custom hook till now we have been using different type of hook they are simply a function that do some task now we can create our own hook suppose we are trying to fetch some information and we are doing lot of work what if we create a hook ourselves just to fetch information fetch product maybe fetch feature product or maybe we have some other information currently we just have one endpoint which is product in future we also want to have separate page for separate product like slash 1 for first slash 2 for second if you remember we did some example like 1001 for the first product then the second product then the third product so how we are going to tackle this we don't we don't need to recall this again and again on each page what we can do is we can create our custom hook call that hook every time we need to fetch some information okay i hope i make sense what i am saying is let's convert this whole thing into a hook and then i can reuse that information as many time as i want currently we are just trying to fetch one information which is products but in future we want information on different pages and instead of writing this and doing this again and again let's simplify this so what i am going to do is inside my source folder i am going to create a folder called as hooks now inside this hooks i am going to create a new folder and i am going to call this as use fetch dot js now remember this is a rule that whenever we are working with any type of hook a custom hook we need to use use as the initial term and then you can call whatever you want so here i am creating a hook basically to fetch so i am going to call this as use fetch you can call this folder as anything that you want i am calling it as hooks because that's the most common way in the community so what we have to do it's there is too much stuff so the first thing i need to do is i need to treat it like some normal component but uh, this is not going to return uh, any type of jsx it is going to return either null if we are doing any type of task or return some data in case in this case in our example we are trying to pass information about our products so it is going to be an object or maybe we can return some type of array depending on our requirement so we can return anything basically and what we are going to do here well we are going to fetch information here and then return that information okay let me explain let me explain from here we don't need this all the task will be inside here and it will be in a different way so what i am going to do is in side here i am going to just have a data and then set data which will be use state now by default this data will be null it's not emptyless it's not because we don't know what type of data we are trying to fetch 
we are creating a generic method not for just products but with other information we can have any type of api so by default we have null for our data now our aim is as soon as we call this for the first time i need to call the use effect here as soon as we call this we need to execute some function fetch the information and then we are going to have some type of dependency the first thing the first thing should be we just need to create a function here and just access that information okay let's say i have a function now i can have everything inside here i'm not using the callback use callback or something i am going to have a function which is going to say fetch data it's generic now it's not product it's data and i can have a sync yeah why a sync because i am using await with my fetch so i can just say const i will have response which is going to be await my fetch now here i need to pass the url and how i am going to get the url i will get this as my parameter so this is the url it can be product it can be anything else okay and then i am going to have const instead of data i'm going to call this as result here because otherwise we have data as state so it will be response dot json so now i have access to the result and what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to set the data which will be my result awesome now why i am taking uh, this data and set result so i can use this information outside of my use effect as well otherwise if i just return from here or if i just store this in a constant i will be scoped inside this only now data can be accessed anywhere because we need to return it so what i am going to do is i am going to return the data as data so i can use shorthand method which is just data the other thing we are utilizing the url which is a variable to recall this stuff so i'm going to add it as dependency now we just define this we haven't called or evoked this so we need to do that here awesome looks great so this is a generic fetch every time we give some url it is going to fetch that information and it is going to return it now how to use that here well the first thing i need to do is import that hook so i just need to use fetch that should be from hooks and then use fetch this is great now the next thing i can do is i can just call this use fetch and i can pass my url i already have this great and the other thing is it is going to return me the data great i can have that here i can say const now remember this is going to be an object it is going to return me this object either i can just return the data and i can access the data here but it, since there are chances that we return multiple thing in future we have some status code some other thing so we are returning a proper object here i am going to destructure it so i can just have access to data now that's it that's great now this data has access to all the products that we get as result so now i can use this data here and now i don't have any use case for this product i can remove this i can also re rename this i can say it as products and here i can utilize this here let me save uh, let me also do a console log for my products basically let me save get back here okay i am getting a null and an error so the first thing i should fix is here i need to check if i get a null or if the result is there then i am going to render all the stuff if it's null then i am not going to render this so this is just conditional rendering the second thing is let me remove this from here what i am going to do is i am going to okay i need to use a wait here 
and I'm also going to just console log my result here let me save get back here you can see it's loading now let me refresh yeah the error is gone so things are working fine you need to remember that by default we have null so on the first run this is null so we return null this is null our product is null since our product is null so dot map is not going to work on null okay now you might be thinking why null and why not empty array well there is only one reply well there is a quick response with null we can recognize when our api is not working suppose in future if any case our api is not working this data will be null but suppose if we get a response from our api but it's empty then it will be empty array so it's easy for us to recognize the difference when we are getting an empty array from api and when we are not even getting a response then it will be null okay looks great to me get back here everything is working fine so that's how we can create a hook ourselves now i can remove this i don't need this use callback or use effect uh, make sure you have imported them here and make sure you are using a weight properly so this is how the flow works now the term should be generic like data and here result so these are generic term if i'm you working with a product i will call it product but now if i have a different page i have a different component and i need to fetch the request i just need to pass the url here and i will get the result that's how thing is going to work and i can also rename them so that's all for this lecture and i see you guys in the next one Hey there, welcome back, Shubham this side. Now let's focus on a new feature, let's say loading feature. So at this point of time, we are trying to execute all the product, but at the time of loading, what we need to show? What I mean by this is, at this point of time, we have these product because our server is on our desktop basically. So if I refresh, everything is pretty quick. But the duration, the duration between the blank page and the product we need to show some type of loading, animation, text or something like this. So for that, we can create a state and according to it, we can demonstrate some stuff or restrict some stuff. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about it. Now remember, we have shifted all type of content that require loading inside our fetch. And this is the best thing. Now we can have everything here only. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a new state. I'm going to call this as loading and set loading. By default, the loading will be false. So by default, I expect everything is rendered. But what I'm going to do is as soon as I get here inside this function, I change my loading to true. That means I am now loading stuff. Now, as soon as I got the result, I can say set loading to false. That means I'm, I have stopped loading. Now, everything is happening in these two lines only. We are calling the API. We are trying to get the response. We are converting it into JSON. So everything happens between these two lines, and this is the line which is going to take time. Since our server right now is on desktop, so we are getting result in some milliseconds, I guess. So if I get here, so if I change the terminal, you can see it's millisecond. But as soon as we get into real world, these milliseconds can be seconds, one second, two second, three second. So this is going to take time. But since our loading is true, just before that, we can show something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass another information, which is loading. And I'm going to access this information here, which is loading. And I can just say, if loading is true, I need to demonstrate a paragraph. For now, I'm taking paragraph, but it can be anything. So I can just have a p tag here loading or 
loading products if i save get back here refresh you can see there was loading product so to slow down our server what we can do is we can get it to our network and here we have option to control everything control our speed and everything else so get here inside our throttling and here i am going to say slow 3g refresh you can see loading products so as soon as we got the response loading products is gone and we have this uh, let's refresh again refresh first we got loading products and then we now instead of loading product we can use a image a gif or any type of animation that depend on us but i hope you got the idea what we did i know i tried to have this really fast we simply created a new state and gave it a name of loading as soon as we get into the function we first say okay we are going to start loading then we did all the tasks that require time as soon as we got the result we said okay loading is done now convert this into false in the meantime we also shared the information about loading so here we have access to this if loading is true that means we are going to execute this if loading is false we are going to not execute this that simple now here we can use any type of image as well currently i'm just using a p tag but here i can have a image let me use img let me take this here also let me give it a class name loading and here i can fetch the information so all i have to do is get here uh, import my loading from it should be from my assets slash loading dot gif now i can pass this information here to my source since it's dynamic let me pass now let me save this one get back here let me try to refresh this one i hope you got the idea of how we are going to see the loading image i took a simple image so it should be easy to visualize it's still fast <laughs> slow uh, since our server is on desktop it's still fast so you can see that's how our image is going to be uh, we can improve a lot of things about it but uh, it's a simple example that's how loading is going to work you can have any type of text or any type of image so i'm going to revert back to text now uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to undo all of this or i'm going to just comment this yep this is much easier for you to implement so that's all about loading in the next one let us also talk about how to handle error there are chances that this response can be slow but there are also chances that we get an error with this response that means we get error in terms of uh, no page found or no this url is not working or some server error so we can have multiple type of issues in the next one let us talk about it hey there welcome back now let us talk about how to handle errors till now we have been assuming that the response that we are going to get here is okay but what if maybe our server is not working or what if maybe we have passed a wrong url in these cases we are going to mess with response uh, for now let me go back to no throttling get into my elements refresh okay everything is great get into console everything looks great but uh, let me try to play with some stuff let me try to provide a wrong url save get here we got an error you can see this entire error so the simple thing we are going to do is we are going to cover them with try and catch so i'm going to have a try that is going to cover my fetch condition so i'm going to try i'm going to get a response if the response is great then i'm going to do all of this stuff otherwise i'm going to throw an error so let me take all of this let me paste it here and let me have a catch 
which is going to have error and let me say console.log and my error dot message let me save this one get back here clear this up refresh and i still don't have a clear screen why well because this handles only server error this try currently with this type of response what i mean by this what we can do is we can just stop this server let me stop this server okay now if i get back here try to refresh this now you can see my page is rendering but i am failed to fetch this is loading so that means we get here we get into the state we set our loading true so that means we get inside our function we set our loading to true we get into our try we get here got an error so we get here and then we just simply showed the message uh, console console log the message which is fail to fetch and now my loading is true because i exited the try statement from here i haven't tried both of them so that means my loading is true that is why this is there and that means i'm able to handle the server errors but what if error from my side this is happening because our server is uh, not working but suppose our server is working but we have given a wrong url in the working server then chances are i am going to get some response with some code with some error so what i am going to do is i am going to do a console log and i am going to print this response and let me save get back here and check out the response this is the response and here you can see not found uh, status is not found status 404 that means the page we are trying to uh, fetch is not found so in these type of cases i can have a if condition and i can say if uh, like uh, i can have a if condition if my response dot what was the term if i i can say if response dot ok is false then we can throw an error something like this so if response dot ok is false currently i am evaluating true if this is true i am going to get inside here right so i am just going to reverse this and i am going to do certain stuff i am going to throw an error i am just going to say throw new error this will send me to catch and i am going to pass status text so here i will have access to response dot status text awesome get here refresh now you can see it's not found so that means now we can handle all type of error chances are my server is not working or maybe i am giving the wrong url so if i give the right url if i get back here it's working fine so that's how we are going to handle these stuff. There are two common condition, either my server is not working or I'm giving the wrong information. Okay, great. Now it depends on us that we want to set this loading to false or we can just keep showing. So if you want to set this loading to false in our cache, we can do that. But nope, I don't want to. I want to first check this information. Otherwise it should just display the loading part. What I can do is I can just pause the server. I can try to refresh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I want to just show this. Or we can create a new state error. And here I can say set error, which is going to be use state. And by default, it is empty. What I can do is I can have this information here and here i can set my error to this error message awesome i can also set the loading to false and this error message and i can also pass this error i can fetch this error here and i can create a new p tag basically 
I can have this error here and I can just simply print it. Let me save, get back here. If I refresh, things are working fine. But uh, suppose I, if I stop the server, get back, refresh, loading, I got failed to fetch. Awesome. What I can do is uh, restart the server and try to give a wrong URL. Get back here, refresh. Everything is working fine. What I can do here is uh, give a wrong URL. Get back here. Now you can see not found. So that's how we can control a lot of stuff. Now if I give you a quick uh, revision, we first covered everything into try and cache block. So if there is any error with response, we are going to get inside our cache and we are just going to show the error inside our console log. But then realize that this try only handles the server errors. What if we gave a wrong URL? So we are trying to just check if the response is not okay, then we are going to throw an error. It is going to handle now all, all type of errors. So we are going to test this and then we are going to have the information. So we throw the error, we get here, we get access to information about our error, we console it, now we don't need to. So I'm going to remove this. We remove the loading information and we set the error. Now we are also passing the error information through our return, accessing this here and demonstrating some type of content here. So we developed an entire ecosystem around our error now. Remember in all case, we need to set loading to false by the end of the uh, error thing or not thing. So you can also use a finally, so if you want to just set this to false. Now there is only one case remaining that by any chance, maybe you set the error to this message. And then in the next run, you have a good result and you demonstrated all the results. Everything is great. You set the data, you set the loading. But now the problem is you are still having this error message on your screen. There is, there can be some cases. So if you want, you can set the error to null or empty string, whatever you want, you can set it. Because here you are going to compare if it's null or empty string, anything, it should be falsy value. So you don't get inside here. So if you want, if you want to take care of this, if the result is great, that means everything is working fine. You can set your error to empty string. So that's it. That's all the condition related to error handling. I know we are trying to complicate stuff, but uh, I really wanted to explore everything, every possible stuff. So now we have mixed our use effect. We now have our own custom hook. We are trying to have conditional rendering along with the message and we are handling errors as well. So we are trying to do lot of stuff together. I hope you are understanding everything. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back, Shubham this side and in this one, we are going to talk about how to stop our fetch request in middle. So what I mean by this, uh, what is this in middle means? So for example, we have rendered our product list. If we have completely rendered, we have all the information on our page and things are working fine. But for any case, during the time of, since it is going to take time, it is going to get here, get our URL, create a fetch request. And as soon as we reach here, as soon as it, it, this fetch request is gone, we asked our application to just remove this uh, component. Maybe we want to hide this component or maybe we are trying to render a different component. There can be many cases. So this, this is a situation where we are in between, like we send the request, we got some data, what we need to do, or we haven't got the data. So we just send the request. We are in middle of something. So what we need to do? Well, in this situation, we need to abort this entire process. 
and for that we use a controller and we can simply use abort controller i was also reading about this i tried different method so this is pretty common uh, i will try to link this stuff so it is called as abort controller and it works pretty easy all we have to do is we need to create a const about our controller and then with our fetch request we need to pass this information and uh, when we are working with use effect we can just return that information basically our controller dot abort now why with the return statement because if you know use effect goes from mounting to unmounting to mounting so if we are stopping any type of process if we are just getting out of our use effect we are going to call the unmount phase that means the return phase so that can be handled this a, it's a great article i will recommend you to read it so let's try this stuff uh, what we are going to do is we are simply going to create a controller so inside our use effect i am going to create this controller now i just need to pass this with my fetch information now currently we are just doing a get request so things are simple but if i give you an idea we have lot of information with fetch if you remember we can pass method query body headers lot of information we can pass with our fetch so what i am trying to pass right now is this simple signal so i get here add a comma and pass this signal that's great now the next thing i want to do is i want to just call this and the best place to call this is with our return statement so inside our use effect i can have a return statement about my unmount or i can convert this into a single line function that would be much easier for us to execute now let me refresh you can see the text that the user uh, stop the request something like this why well remember when we are in development phase our use effect goes from mounting to unmounting to mounting no matter what so during the unmounting phase we call this return and let me try to go into slow mounting unmounting and mounting again so that's how things are working okay uh, no throttling now remember this i just wanted to talk about this controller you don't need to add it with everything i just wanted to cover a case uh, a scenario where we want to abort a fetch request so that's how we are going to implement it now chances are you are going to utilize this in future in a different condition in a different way but it's just three step create your controller pass the information and then abort it that's it and this usually happen when we don't want to render this maybe we are trying to render some other information now or maybe we want to hide this component or any other reason so we just want to stop our fetch and <laughs> what i mean by this so that's all i hope you got the idea and i see you guys in the next one Hey there welcome back now in this lecture we are going to discuss about one condition that we missed and if you remember i discussed about this earlier uh, okay we are passing something like a, a primitive value which can be a string number something like this then we covered a case in which we were trying to pass a function so we use call back to cover that function but what if we try to pass an array or object things are going to get ugly actually so suppose i i am going to pass some type of uh, object here let's say here i am trying to pass information about my body so i can just have content and i can say a b c something like this and what i am going to do is i am going to access this information here and i will have information inside my fetch i am going to access it let's say body and then uh, i need to pass this information maybe here i'm not passing because because i just wanted to create that case and let me add a console dot log and here i am going to say dash 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 so that means if i take a new variable here i need to pass this variable here as well 
which is our dependency. Now I'm going to remove this because it's an actual term. But if I save this one, get back here. You can see it's calling the function again and again. Now why this is happening? Well, because we are trying to pass an object. If you remember, I said this clearly, it can be an object, it can be an array. And all of this is happening because the memory address for them changes every time we refresh stuff or reevaluate stuff. So what we can do is a simple thing that we can do is we can use use ref. So whatever we content we are taking, it can be anything. So I can just take that content inside underscore body and here I can just re-render them. I can render them into let's say a new const which is body and here I can use use ref and use ref take a initial value. I'm going to pass that. Let me save. Now this body is created with the help of use ref with initial value. So there is a reference that we created with the initial value and we are not going to create any association. So this is the body. If I try to pass it, it's going to work fine. If I get here, clear the stuff, refresh, you can see things are working fine. Refresh, things are working fine. So that means if you are using function, you need to utilize use callback. If you are using an object, you need to utilize use ref. And if you are using any type of state or string or anything, then things are going to work fine without anything else. So that's how you are going to utilize use ref to create a reference, not just for your element, but uh, for your values as well. That's all. I hope you got the idea. I am not passing this here with fetch because that will be an actual information that we are trying to pass, but uh, we don't need to do that. I was just taking this for an example. That's all. I hope you got the idea. I hope now use effect is clear. This was a big section. We tried multiple things to be honest. And this is something about core react. So that's it. And I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Shobham this side. Now let's get our hand dirty with a full fledged project. Till now we have been discussing about small concept here and there and try to implement on our app. But now let's focus on all the concept together and build this task mate. I know it's a simple project, but now our aim is just to apply all the concept. Till now we were trying to learn these concepts and see how we are going to implement them. But now we understood. Now we are directly going to implement them. We are not redefining every small bit about their syntax and everything. So the aim is to build this task application. Now let me give you a quick demo what this application is. So we have this quick app. It is currently divided into three component, our header, add task and show task. So we have our add task that can help us to add any type of task. Once we add a task, we will have option to get it here. Now this section is important because now we not only have better design, but better functionality. You can see we have count of our to do task. We have option to clear all. And most importantly, with each individual task, we have a edit and delete option. So that means I'm not only able to add that task, I'm able to edit it later. And yeah, we can delete it. So let me give you a quick demo. Here I can add a task. Let's say add. I have this task here. I also have option to edit it. Let's say edited and here this task is edited. I have option to delete this. That's how this is going to work. You will also see information like time, date and yeah, of course we can delete them. So if I click on delete, you can see this is working fine. And if I click on clear all, yep, that's gone. So that's how this application is going to work. I know it's a simple app, but now we are implementing everything together. Earlier it was bit by bit. The other small feature you might see here is this theme. So you can see you have option to change theme and this works great. It's more like a gimmick. I should say we are just doing a small bit here. Uh, if I talk about a real theme, 
we do lot of things if if we have an official theme uh, there are option to change font there are option to change background buttons lot of thing but here we are just changing background if you observe nothing much it's a gimmick to be honest but it's a small functionality in these small project these functionalities looks good to be honest so if this is your first official react project these small things matter like this small count now if you look at this count it's a small feature but helps you a lot to understand your product better let me give you another example if i say add here let me say add now if i click on edit you will see this button is also changed so these are small feature which not create a big impact but uh, yeah it helps to improve experience and as a front end developer you need to understand these steps okay yeah this is awesome i hope you got the idea what we are trying to build i hope you got the demo you can try it here taskmate-ul.netlify.app yeah by the end of this section we are also going to deploy this so you will have your first app online now before ending this demo let me also tell you everything that we are going to do right now is going to be saved oh not this lecture but all the tasks that we are going to write for example i have a task 1 i have task 2 and i have task 3 now if i try to refresh everything is saved oh not just this our theme priority is also saved that means if i refresh now the theme that i am going to select right now will be saved for my own preference not only this let me copy this one close this and open this everything is saved so that means any time i come on this particular website on my browser all my settings all my data is saved for me how i am doing that i haven't logged in how i am saving all this information well we are going to use local storage so if i get here get into inspect get into my application local storage and here you can see i have theme priority as gradient 1 and i have task list as this my simple task list which is stored in an array so that's how we are going to save individual data on their local storage that means if you open this website right now it will be blank for you let me show you so suppose if you open this website you are going to see the default theme and an empty list and now if you save or if you do any type of setting it will be stored on your browser in local storage now remember this is not going to work with incognito mode because we are not going to save any type of data you need to use the normal side so yeah that's how things are going to work this is the default one but all the theme and the task is stored for each individual on their local storage okay fun stuff ahead uh, let's start our journey from the next one Hey there welcome back now let me start my project from basics here what i did is i created a folder which is projects inside my desktop and it's currently empty so what i am going to do is i am going to create a react app let's say npx create react app and here i'm going to give it a name taskmate well this is officially taskmate now So I'm going to give it a name taskmate you can call it anything else and let me wait let me fast forward this that's done let me change the directory and get inside my taskmate once that is done all I have to do is open my vs code now remember this change of directory is important because we get from projects to taskmate this is the specific project folder in which we have all these file okay let me get here close all of this and do the basic stuff which we have already done 10 times now uh, remove everything get here inside my index remove all this stuff save get inside my app uh, let me remove everything here and i'm just going to have a h1 tag saying hello world and i'm also going to remove the logo import 
the other thing I'm going to empty is I'm going to remove this and I'm going to remove this looks good to me the first thing I'm going to do right now is to open my server so I'm going to say npm start this is great so here is our quick setup now I'm going to do all the static task that is to add all my CSS all my images that I need which is just logo right now this one and update my public uh, if I need to update my favicon or title everything that is static so let's do that first I'm going to jump onto the CSS part and here I'm going to paste the CSS now if you observe I have some variable I have imported bootstrap icon as well as the poppins which is our google font and then I have also imported some basic setting that is applied to all and then my theme save get here then I am adding all my CSS for all type of component here only so it will be easy for us to copy paste then you can divide them according to the component that's done css part is done now i just need to create a new folder called as assets and here i just need to add my logo that's done i have pasted it here this is great now what i'm going to do is since it's a project i'm going to have a proper favicon and all these images so let me copy paste this from the other side so let me open the folder so this is our taskmate project folder and I need to get inside the public and here I have these two logo and my favicon so I'm going to replace them with the newer one which is the icon of our new project so that's it all the images is done uh, the other thing I need to do is just edit the title so let's say this project name which is taskmate something like this so you have something related to your project only that's done all the static task is done now we can focus on our ui and start working on the design and everything remember we already added css so it should be easy now in the next lecture let us create ui from the basics hey there welcome back now let us start our task building the ui now it should be easy for us since we know the structure we did these type of task earlier as well so let's do that the first thing i'm going to do is get here inside my source create a folder called as components and here inside i'm going to create three component my header let's say header.js then i'm going to have add task and show task let's say add task.js and my show task.js now you can have task list.js that should also work fine name depend on us and here let me give a basic structure to them that's done now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to import all of them here so let's say import i'm going to have my header here which will be from my slash components and then slash my header awesome then i just need to repeat this twice this time it will be my add task and then show task that's done now i just need to replace this and i should add my header let me copy this one add it thrice this time it will be add task and then my show task let me save get here okay awesome so i have all of this now the first focus i currently have is to design the basic header not the full fledged but have a basic one so all i have to do is get here inside my header and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this i'm going to have my header and inside this i'm going to divide things into two part the first part will be about my image and name and the second part will be about my theme selector so let's do that so i'm going to have a div and i'm going to give it a class of logo now this is going to have my image and my 
name now my project name so i'm going to have a image here and i'm also going to have a span tag to have my project name awesome the first thing i should do right now is to import this image i'm going to say import i'm going to call this as logo which will be from my assets slash logo dot png and here now i can pass this logo to my source uh, in alternative tag it's good to have taskmate logo now since we are working on a project it's good to have the small detail let me save get back here okay so we have one side ready let's focus on the other side what i'm going to do is have another div tag and this time i'm going to call it as theme selector now remember for css i'm trying to use camel case names you can use other type but remember the css that i have added in index and app are according to the exact same name so it's important for you to follow them if you want to use the default css that we have added so yeah this is theme selector and each one of them will be a specific span let's do that so i'm going to have a span tag and here we don't need to add any text inside the span but things will be controlled according to the class name so let's have light save get back here you can see i have a small circle let's do that for multiple times i gave each one of them a name so i am going to have medium then i am going to have dark so i gave each one of them a name this is light medium dark and then i gave it g1 g2 g3 uh, this is gradient basically so gradient 1 gradient 2 gradient 3 uh, then i can have g1 g2 g3 let me save get back here yep so now we have each one of them now you might see one quick difference and the difference is that if i select any one of them here it's basically enlarged so behind the scene what we are doing is we are selecting and having a term as active theme so let's say active theme if i add it here or with any one let's say i have with this one if I save and if I get back here, you can see now this one looks active. But this is just the zoom in part. We haven't selected theme by default. Remember that will be a separate lecture. But this is just a small CSS thing that is going to show okay this is active. So later on what we are going to do is if we are going to click on G1 then this will be active. If I click on this one then that will be active. If I click on G2 that will be active. Uh, light that will be active currently we are just designing the basic ui part okay this is done we need to do a lot of stuff here in terms of functionality but this is done now let's focus on add task so we have a simple form and this should be easy to work with so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a section here i'm going to remove this and i'm going to have a section and let's also give a class name here so with this section i'm going to give it a class name as add task and inside this we just need to have a form that's it so i'm going to have a form we don't need this action and inside this form i'm going to have an input field we are going to utilize placeholder something like add task so i don't need any type of label and then i'm going to have a button so let's say i'm going to have a button uh, which should just say add awesome now we need to provide certain information but before that let me add this button type as submit yeah so this input is of type text there are a lot of things that we need to provide uh, since it is going to be related to task so let me provide task the other thing is we need to do auto complete as off because i don't want these drop down and let's also add a placeholder so i can just say add task the other thing we need to focus it's optional but i want to have is max length so i can just say that i want maximum length of 25 that's it should be enough for our add task 
let me get here you can see we have this add task awesome now let's focus on this show task let's get here get into our show task oh this is going to be big to be honest because we need to have this individual card as well so let's do that the first thing let us have this section and yeah i need to add a name the class name should be show task now inside this uh, first i need to have this information which is my clear all button and my to do task so this should be easy i can add a div or a paragraph and have this information about our to do and about our clear all then i am going to have a an ordered list to have each individual card let's do that i'm going to have a div and i'm going to provide a name which is head so this is going to be head for our show task you can give it a name as header as well but remember this is a class name not the official header and now i will wrap these two things together which is my text and my count and then this is going to be either a span or a button whatever we want so let's do that so the simple thing i am going to do is i am going to have a div uh, inside this i am going to have two spans so i will have a span which is going to just give it a text of to do then i am going to have another span which is going to have the length for default i am going to write 0 uh, which is this one and here let me quickly add class name let's say class name which is going to be title and here i am going to have a class name which is going to be count once that is done i am going to have a button here and i just need to say clear all as text and to apply the design i just need to add my class name and here let me have my class name as clear all let me save get back here and here you can see now we have this head part great now we need to focus on the inside content which is going to be the ul tag our unordered list inside this i am just going to have a single list for now we just need to show the name of our task and time in the first part here and in the second part we are going to have this information which is icon for edit and delete so inside our p i am going to have span first for my task name the second one to demonstrate the time then after that i am going to have a i tag i am going to utilize bootstrap here that means bootstrap icons to have both of them okay it's a simple structure let me say i am going to have task a and here i am going to utilize class as name and here i am going to utilize some time and i need to add a class name as time that stands for our paragraph then we are going to have a icon and we need to add class name from bootstrap so the best thing we can do is jump onto bootstrap icons scroll down and here you can directly search for edit what type of icon you need and you can have information here so what i'm going to do is since i already have information i just need to get into my class name and apply that it will be bootstrap icon and then the first one will be about my pencil and the second one should be about my delete which will be bootstrap and bootstrap trash let me save get back here and you can see we have our first task now here we can do one more thing if i try to add multiple of them it will be a different view you can see now we have three now since we already have css so it's easy to have a view now let me just clear this up and let's have a basic setting quick basic setting what i am going to do is i am going to have a array let's say task and here i am going to have a list and i am going to add a task so we can just have a proper map thing uh, later on we are going to create state and understand things better but i am just going to create us individual task so i am going to have a id uh, let's say 1001 then I am going to have a name uh, which I am going to pass as task A and then I am going to have time for now I am going to pass it as a string 
awesome let me try to have multiple of them let me copy this one let's say this is two this is three task b task c now what i want is i want to loop over this so i have this as a single as a single element or i should say as a single task but now in the array i have three so i can just create a basic setup to loop and we already did this multiple times so i'm going to use dynamic one earlier we did this with state but now since i have an array already i can use that i have task i'm going to say map and then get here i need to select the individual task and then do all this stuff so i'm going to select the individual task and here i just need to demonstrate each information let me take the simple li setup get have a tab and now i have access to this task so i can say task dot name the other thing will be about my time let me save this one get back here now you can see i'm actually having a proper loop to demonstrate all tasks later on we will have a state and store stuff so now our base ui is ready now you are going to have a small difference with this css as well as this because i keep improving stuff there will be certain changes here and there as i write the code so i hope you got the idea that's the base ui now we need to add functionality to show stuff so we will have a state as task list then we need to add stuff so we are going to take the task and add at the end of our task list then there will be clear stuff so that means cleaning our task list here we need to calculate the length and storing all of this stuff to our local host and most importantly having ability to edit stuff so yep let's try to work on each individual part from the next lecture Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a task list state so I can add task inside it. I can delete task inside it and do all this stuff and I can show the task. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this inside my app. So I can pass both of them that means my task list and my set task list to both of them. Here what I'm going to do I'm going to have a const that is going to have my task list and set task list. Awesome I just need to utilize my use state and here I need to pass either default value as null or an empty string depend on our requirement but uh, you can start with empty string for now also it's recommended to have all the import related to react at the top then all the imports about the package then your component and then your css something like this and your hook should be called at the top only so we will learn about these flow as we move forward great now i'm going to pass this task list here as well as to my show task list now all i have to do is get here access both of them so i'm going to have my task list and my set task list i need to access them here as well inside my add task now the first thing i'm going to do is instead of using this fake task i am going to utilize this and i am going to have it here so that means whatever the item we have i am going to map them great that's the easy thing now i need to focus on the add one at this point of time we don't have any so it is going to be empty right now if i get here and here you can see it's empty the other thing is one quick change we also need to do is instead of this zero i should have task list dot length great uh, let me get here inside my add task and what I am going to do is I am going to play with the form So when I submit the form I should just handle it Handle submit and here what I am going to do I am just going to define a function 
let's say const handle submit yeah now we need to do certain stuff so as soon as we handle the submit we have access to this input as well as button so when we submit this we are going to have access to the event let's say e and the first thing i should do is i should prevent the reload so i can just say prevent default that is going to prevent the reload and we just need to set the task now before that it is not just a single line task we have other information as well you can see the time and we need to generate an id as well so what i am going to do is i am going to create an object and then add the task uh, let me explain what i am going to do so here the first thing is i am going to take my date uh, which is going to be new date there is a specific reason I am taking this uh, in a different constant. And now the second thing I am going to do is I am going to create an object. So let's say const and I am going to say it as new task. And this object is going to have the ID first. And then I am going to have the name. And then I am going to have the time. So ID either we can use random generator or we have access to this date right. So what we can do is we can just use date dot get time. Yep, this is going to give us the time in milliseconds. So it will be counted from 1970. That is going to be pretty big and it's impossible to replicate because every millisecond is changing. So yeah, it the only thing that can happen is we match millisecond of two tasks at the same time, which is impossible for our small app. That's great. Now we are going to have the name that is going to be the task that we are going to have which will be the input field so that we need to access from e.target uh, wait a second we are going to do that don't worry then we are going to have this time which is going to be pretty big because we need to convert stuff into some string so this is usually the uh, local time string and this is going to be local date string. So let's do that. So we have this time. Uh, I need to utilize the backticks. And here I need to pass two information. The first one will be about my local time string. The second one will be about my local date string. Since I have access to this date, I'm going to utilize dot to local. Okay, this is date. Uh, this is time string. Yep. And then I'm going to have something similar date dot to local date string. Yep, awesome. So we created this new object. Uh, we still need to add the name just a second. Yeah, so we created this new object. Now we need to add this object to our task. But before that, let me comment this for now. But before that, let me give the output of each one of them, how they look. So I'm going to do console.log. I'm going to have information about my event dot target dot value. That is going to be first. Then the other thing I want to console log is my date. And let me save, get here inside my task. Uh, the first thing is get into my console. Let's say add, click on add. This is undefined and this is the stuff about our time. Okay, so this is the time. The other thing I want to show is that if I use date dot get time and you can see this, if I click on add, you can see the milliseconds is changing every time. And I need to get here. So this should be target dot task dot value. Remember task is the name. So e dot target dot task. That means my input field dot value. That means whatever the value I'm passing. Get here. Give something random. Click on add. You can see random and then the time. I hope you got the idea what we are trying to do. So I'm going to take this. Remove this. Remove this console. Now you have idea what is the object here. Uh, so we have this time. We have this name. And this is just converting this date, basically this date into a time string into a date string. This is great. Now all we have to do is focus on set task list. 
So that means we just need to have a list or I should say array. And the first thing is to add all the previous tasks which our task list currently have and just add a new one which we just created something like this. Awesome. This is done. Let me save. Now remember this is a state. So every time we add a new task, we are going to re-render this. If I get back here, let's say random, you can see it's here. I'm going to get an error about the key. Uh, let's say random two, add random three, add. It's working. Now if I refresh, things will be gone. But now we are able to add a task and demonstrate it here. Before moving forward, let me quickly fix the key error. So with my li, I should add a key. Uh, now key should be easy because now we have task ID. So we don't have to worry much. And one thing we can do very quickly is to clear all since we just need to clear the entire task list. So all I can do is either I can have a on click function here. We have the access to task list set task list. So we can do anything. Let's say on click and here I can just say uh, set task list as empty. That should be great. If I get here, refresh, no error. Let's say random one working fine. Random two working fine. Random three working fine. If I clear all that's great. So things are working great at a small level. Now you might see that every time we add a task, this is not clean. So we need to do something either after the addition of our task or I should say after the set task, we can just have a value as empty. So all we have to do is access the value and I can just say empty. Let me save, get back here. Now if I have a random, add it, it's empty now and I can clear it. Awesome. Now this is the base level functionality that we did earlier as well. So it was pretty easy for us to implement. There are few things that we now need to take care of. The first thing is like we add a task, we should have option to edit and delete this task from our task list. So this is going to be interesting why when we need to delete this, we need to filter out stuff from our entire task list. So our task list is going to find this element and then remove it. The other thing is to edit. Now edit comes with lot of complexity. Why? First we need to find the task from the task list. Yep, we need to find that particular task. Then we need to add that information here. If you observe, if I click on edit, I need to add that information here. Let me refresh this stuff. If I click on edit here, I need to first add this information here. And when I update it, I need to update that particular task. So you can observe this as a task list. I have my item one, item two, item three. I need to visit each individual item and find that particular item. If I update, I need to update. I need to update the time as well. So that's how things are going to work. But uh, I hope you got the idea. We are moving well. We already covered our basic functionality. Now in the next one, let us focus on other functionalities. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us try to understand how to implement these two important functionalities, which is edit and delete. Now the problem we are going to face is that both of them are different component. So I'm inside my show task. I click on this edit option. What I want is the data should get inside my add task to this input field. If you observe, if I click here, I get this data. So there are stuff happening inside the different component basically. And the other thing is I should have information that which task I have selected. So I need to carry that information everywhere. It, it should be the ID. It should be the information about the task as well as the time, because if I click on update, the time is updated. So we need to carry that individual task information. The best solution is to create a state so that I can share this everywhere. Now, I literally mean create a state because I need that everywhere. If you observe, I need it in a different component itself. 
so that's the easiest way to create a state and handle it now what i am going to do is i am going to create a state basically uh, and i'm going to call this as task now this will be my individual task i am going to handle now this is not to show anywhere this is when i perform a specific task to an individual element now by default i am storing it as an empty object now since we are only storing one object so i don't need to take a list i can store a single object which is going to have a name uh, its uh, id and the date so this is empty right now and what i am going to do is i am going to pass this stuff to both of them uh, I, if we want we can divide things into multiple line it's easy to read and here i can pass this stuff which is my task so add it here let's say my task and my set task remember you don't need to add the commas because it's basically a single line something like this uh, let's do that here let's have task list set task and then these two let me save okay now i can access both of them uh, the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get here i am going to get here i'm going to have my task and my set task let me copy this as well and add it here now let's add the functionality the first functionality should be pretty easy to delete any stuff so when i click on the trash i should be able to delete this okay so the first thing let me take it and let me add it at the front yeah so the first functionality to have option to delete so on click i want to handle the delete stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a handle delete and this is going to take information about my task id which task i want to delete the second thing i am going to have here is about my edit option so i'm going to have a on click which is going to be handle edit now here again i am going to have a task id so i can just find this particular task from my list and delete it or edit it now remember this task is basically this one i'm playing with the scope so you need to remember that this is the task it's not the state remember this point this is the state this is the individual task if you want i can edit i can just call it as element or to do something like this we can do that but it will solve the confusion here i want really want to make things complicated since we are learning it is going to be fun but if you see now it's easy to for you to remember that this is to do so it's easy for you to understand to be honest if you call this as task you will understand more about scope that this is the scope for this entire task okay let's get here let's get back now what i am going to do is i am going to create these two function so i'm going to have the first function uh, let's call this as handle edit and then i am going to have the second function which is going to be handle delete awesome now when i click on handle delete i am going to get a id here let me store that id and what i need to do is i need to filter stuff from my task list so i need to select all the other elements all the other task and just leave this this task this task i need to just leave it left it out so i can just create a, a new updated array i can just say updated task list uh, let me close this so i am going to have a updated task list how i am just going to have my task list i am going to utilize the filter option and i just need to have all the task that is not equals to this id first let's select the individual to do and i'm going to say to do dot id is not equals to the id that i'm passing here okay awesome and then i can set the task list to this new updated task list you can see what we did here we selected all the elements that is not equals to our id 
So suppose I have these three element. I visited the first element. Check if the ID is equal or not. If not equal, okay. We are going to store this inside our updated list. Visited the second element. Check if the ID is equal. Nope, not equal. So that means we are going to keep it. Our condition is not equal. If we visit the third element and we check, okay, the ID is equal. Nope, we are not going to keep it. So now our updated task list only have task that is not equal. Awesome. So we just leave the equal one. Now edit is going to be tough. We are going to play with it later, but uh, I just have access to the ID and test out the delete one. Uh, refresh, things are working fine. Let's add one add two add three okay now if i delete one it's gone delete two it's gone delete three it's gone great this is working fine uh, the other thing is so here we haven't used this type of thing it was not required so nope we haven't used it now let's get into edit one edit will require this information because we need to send data here awesome so once we get here inside our edit, we first need to find the selected task. So here I am going to have cons selected task. I need to find that individual task. And uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to utilize my task list dot. I'm going to use find this time because we just need to find an individual element. I am going to select the individual to do inside this. And then I am going to check if this to do ID is equals to my ID that I am passing. So here I am trying to find a task. If I am able to find that I am going to store in a selected task variable. And then I am going to set this particular task here. I am going to have an object. I am going to say the name of the task. And here I am going to have that particular object. Basically, I have access to this task. Let me try to do a console log here. Let me save, get back here. Now, if I have add one, let's say add two. Now, if I click on edit, you can see I have this entire object. Edit, I have this entire object. This is add one, this is add two. So what I can do is now I can store this information. That means the selected task. I can use set task here. Yep. So what I did, I just captured the individual task and stored it here. Now this is the game we need to play carefully. Now I have access to this set task, this task on my add task as well, because this is from our app, app.js. So both the child currently have this information. Now I can get access to this information on my add task as well. So if I click here, I should have the value here and how I can access the value. Well, it's simple. I can just get here inside my input and I can add the value. Let's say here I have option to value and I can just say task save. I need to go with name. So task dot name because it is going to be an object like uh, this. Uh, okay. Let me clear this one. Let me refresh now. Yeah. Things are working fine. And currently we are not storing in local storage. So everything is gone. Let's say add one. Let's say add two. Now if I click on edit, you can see I have access to this. If I click on edit this, I have access to this. So that means I am able to access this particular task. Also, I have a error warning a component is changing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's not an issue. We will figure it out in a minute. So I hope you got the idea what we just did. We are trying to access the information between these two component. Now there is one important thing we need to take care that uh, when we have this task dot name, Basically, we are now in edit mode and if I try to submit right now, suppose if I click on edit, now this should be, this should have an option to update. If I refresh here, 
and if I click on edit, currently it's add. If I click on edit, this should have an option to update. It should not behave like a normal submit, normal add functionality. It should be a update functionality. So ultimately we are going to handle the submit. So this submit will be divided into two part now. The first part to add something, the second part to edit something. Now it should be easy if our task is empty like this one. If our task is empty, that means we are adding some stuff. If our task is having some value, that means we are editing. Why I am saying this is because if you remember, we store the task value, we store, we update this task here inside our edit. So that means if we are editing something, our task is handling some value, our task state. So we can define stuff according to it. So we can have a functionality on our submit. So if we have task dot um, ID, that means we are in some state of edit. And the other case is just to add things directly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it here. I'm going to add it here. Okay. So if we have this, we need to edit stuff inside this. I know this is the tricky part. So let me give you a quick reminder. When we click on this edit, we basically add stuff into our task state. Now this task state was empty, but now we added an object. Earlier it was an empty object, but now we added a selected task object. So that means we are going to have some content here and it should be update stuff. Now the submit part is same because at the end of the day, if we are updating, if we are adding for our form, we are just going to call into submit. So if we are into submit, we need to define if we should call the edit functionality or add functionality. For edit functionality, we are going to check if our task is currently holding ID. If yes, then it's edit. Otherwise, it's just add a new task. Now here, how do we edit? We have the selected task, right? So how can we edit stuff? Well, it should be easy. Okay, it is not going to be easy. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to access the new date because we need to update the date. So I'm going to say just new date. The second thing I am going to require is my selected task, which is already stored in a state. So that's it. The third thing is I need to update the task. So all I have to do is just go with my const and I am going to say update task. And here I'm going to utilize the map functionality. So I'm going to have my task list. That means all the elements from my task list. And I'm going to go with my map. And here with each individual task, I am going to check if it's equal to my task ID. If not, if yes, to be honest, if yes, then I'm going to add the new information. Otherwise the old information. So let's have the first condition. So let's select the individual task, which is to do here and get into the map and here is going to be the fun stuff. So what I'm going to do, I am going to check this to do dot id as equals to equals to my task dot id. Now to do dot id is this selected item from my task list. Task dot id is the item which we called for edit. So suppose if I call for edit my third item, so I am going to only experiment on my third item. So if this is equal, then I'm going to do something otherwise something else. Okay. So if this is equal, then what I'm going to do, I am going to store the new updated information. So how I'm going to access the new updated information? Well, so we click on the update here. That means I will have that information. So the first thing I need to update is I don't need to update ID. So ID is going to remain same. So ID will be the task ID only. The second thing is I am going to update the name because that is going to be a new value. So I should access that value. Now the third thing I am going to update is the date. So I'm going to have the time 
and then I should copy paste to be honest this is long ID is going to remain same so this is the condition if I have found the selected item our date is new our value is new if we haven't found the selected item that means all the other item what should I do I should store the normal information the previous information about my to do so what I can say is I can have this ID I can say to do dot ID I can have the name I can say to do dot name I can have time and I can say to do dot time now the better way is you don't need to do this you can just pass to do that's it because it's also an object right so that's how we created a condition again we complicated it but it was worth now instead of all of this you can just pass to do because ultimately that's the whole thing uh, remember to remove the semicolon and this looks good so now we basically created a new list awesome now this new list is ready all we have to do is uh, update our set task list awesome uh, I just need to pass this updated list I can also call this as update list updated task list awesome let me save get back here let's see if I get an error no error let's try to add one let's try to add two let's try to add three if I click on edit got an error no worries let's say add five okay the issue is I am not able to type here okay let's get back here well here is a problem the problem is this is a fixed value which is task.name so we need to update the name basically whatever we are typing we need to change it so what we can do is we can go with on change and we can access the event that we are typing in call our set task method here we are going to have the previous objects the element of the object and then I'm going to have my name and here I just need to add e dot target dot value that is for this particular input field only if I get back here and if I now type something it is working so basically what I mean there is that if we have a value field it is going to be a solid value field only this is the value that's it now we are updating that value as we move forward that means I'm as I type I am updating that set state value so here what I did is I updated the value for my task and if I get here and if I want instead of this e dot target dot task dot value I can also use task dot name because I updated it on the go so I can just say task dot name here as well so let me test this out let me have my task one my task two my task three if I click on edit let's say updated if I add and you can see it's working now so that means we are able to update it but there are few things that are still remaining that is that after updating the task list I should just empty this task that means the task that we are trying to carry the individual task because we don't need it our update is done I also need to clear this so I can clear this easy now uh, since it's depend on value if I clear the task this value should be cleared so we need to work on these two three steps uh, let's try to figure out in next one uh, how to solve them and also look at this warning so we are going to fix all of this in the next lecture thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now in the previous lecture we almost completed all our tasks that is to have a separate edit functionality and add functionality but the problem is once the task is done we are still holding that information and we are getting some sort of error so in this one let us solve this so let's say I have a task one uh, first let me refresh this let's say I have a task one I got the error that's great let's say then I have a add a task 2 then task 3 
if I try to update anyone, I have the option updated. Yeah, this is done and we can see our time is also updated. That means it's working fine. Now the first thing is how to get this out from here. So it is going to be easy. We can just set our task to empty uh, object because after doing all of this, our work is done. I can just say set my task as empty. Similarly, after all my task is done, instead of doing this, since my value is now dependent on task.name, I can just do set my task to empty. Now if I do that, that means my task is gone. So my task is gone. My value should be empty. So that means my input field should be empty. I am doing this after adding my task. That means I should get a empty input. I am also doing this after updating my task. So that means the input field, this field should be empty, right? Well, the world is not that simple. If I refresh, if I just have add one, I am still getting the error and this is not empty. Add two, add three. This is not empty. What is the problem? So here, the first thing I should recommend is try to search about it. If you try to search about it, you will get Google links. You are going to get a blog. You can see I read this blog some time ago. So there are a lot of information that you are going to get. I strongly recommend search about this, read more about it. You are going to get some more information, not just about this topic. Well, the issue here is once we clear all this stuff, the value is undefined. Why? Because now this is an empty object. So task dot name is undefined. So first we have an undefined value here. The other thing is also if we are trying to do on change, we currently don't have any type of value and it doesn't exist. So there is some issue. The easiest solution is to have a or condition and give it a default value which is empty. So if by any chance this is undefined, we can say our default value is empty. We were doing that here. If you remember e dot target dot task dot value. So we were trying to have a empty values. Similarly, instead of doing this, I can have something like if this is undefined, just have a empty value. If I get back here, refresh this again. Now, if I do task one, working fine, task two, working fine, task three, you can see this is cleared and we don't have any warning. And if I say task three, enter, it's clean. Why? Let me repeat again. So after we edit or we add, we are now cleaning this task. So this task dot name doesn't exist and we have a empty value. That's how all our issues are solved and we are not holding any type of task now. So things are fine. Uh, okay, great. So this part is done. If I, I try to edit here and let's say updated, this is updated. If I try to update here, updated, this is updated. If I try to delete this one, this is deleted. Great. If I clean all, everything is working fine. The only thing is we need to store information in our local host. But before that, I want to give you a quick revision what we did. So it's easy for you to understand how things started. Uh, I'm not going to go to basics. I'm going to start from this task and set task. So what we did is inside our app.js, we created a individual task object or I should say state task and set task by default it's empty. So whatever individual state we are going to select, we are going to store its information. Now why we need to store information? So we can play with multiple component. So here in our show, if I click on any element, suppose I click on any edit, this is the edit option. So we are going to get handle edit and we are going to pass that particular ID, which is unique to each individual task. We call this element, we select that task object and we pass that object to our set task. 
that means now we have this information stored in our state the other thing is we have stored that information so now since we have information about task now our value will be filled automatically because now we actually did set task so that means we have that information so our task dot name is something because we stored it here the object is here now so we have task dot name which is create that means we have the value for our input field now since we have handle submit here so that means if i do any type of change it will be stored first inside my object itself with my set task so if i'm writing anything so suppose here i have a uh, task one and task two if i click on edit i get and i reach here this stage task dot name now if i try to type anything let's say updated so with my each small change i am calling on change and i am updating this individual task the name or the task title whatever i am trying to edit i am storing that information with each edit so that means the state task is updated now and once i click on handle submit all i have to do is i have to get here now if we have task dot id that means we are editing something remember set task this holds task id task name and time if we don't have task id that means we are in a empty state and we are adding a new task so we get inside this because after every step we are emptying it we are basically saying it's an empty object remember when we try to add a new task our id is empty but when we edit any task our id is filled at the time of adding a new task we still have if i refresh at the time of adding some task we still have task state why because we are creating task state with name but it's we don't have id so id is unique when we edit it so this is the edit state and this is the add state now at the time of editing we are doing some simple task that is we need a new date so we are accessing that date and what we are trying to do is we are going to map each individual element so what we are doing we are basically creating an updated task list we visit the first element try to have the id with the first element and the individual element that we have stored in our state we match the id if the id is matched yes we update the name and update the time otherwise if this doesn't match we have the previous info only that's it once that is done we have a updated task list make sure you understand about map because it's important here so we have updated task list we update the task list and we set the task now here we can do other stuff as well like we can update the individual task as well but i think map worked well here we can definitely update that individual task and it should work fine as well once this is done we just do uh, set task to empty object so everything is clean now that's all i hope you got the idea this was a major logic that we try to work on Honestly I wanted to talk about this concept of having an individual element state so I created this example otherwise it can be done with other references like uh if I am trying to edit a task I can just have a edit field here itself I don't need to transfer information to uh, to a different component it it can be much easier if I can edit some stuff here but since we are in a learning phase you are watching a tutorial you should understand this now thank you for following now in the next one what we are going to do is add an update button hey there welcome back now this is going to be a super quick lecture all we have to do is add an update button here so i'm going to remove this i'm going to see if we have a task dot id 
if yes we are holding this task id then we are going to do something otherwise something else if we have that id we can say update otherwise we can just say add let me save get back here refresh now here i am going to have task 1 then task 2 then task 3 now if i click on this edit you can see it's working fine let's say update if i click on update our task id is empty now so we have this again so that's how we can simply have a update option just with the reference of task id okay that's it i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us focus on our local storage that means if I'm trying to add some task, I need to store that inside local storage. Now this can be done pretty easily. All we need to focus on our task list. So all we have to do is this task list should be updated when we add any item and this should be accessed when we want to show any item. That means everything should be dependent on local storage and this can be done easily. Uh, the first thing is instead of having this empty right now, I can just go onto local storage and access a task list. So if you remember, uh, we need, if we need to access local storage, all we have to do is go with our local storage dot uh, get item. And then I need to find the task list. Let me save, get back here and here we got an error. Well, the problem is we don't have any currently. So if I get here, we in my local storage, I don't have any task list. So by default, this is empty. This doesn't exist actually. Also, if we get some content, we need to parse it. So I need to use json.parse and convert this entire local storage response. So this is the response that I'm going to get. But on our first run, there is nothing. So we need some option, right? So what we need to do is we need to have a or option for an empty array. So if on first run, if there is any local storage exist, okay, we are going to fetch that. Otherwise it's empty array for us. Let me save, get back here. Now you can see the error is gone. Let me clear and refresh. So I'm not getting any error. So that's the way we are going to access the local storage. If we have any type of information inside our local storage, we will use it. Otherwise it's empty array. But now how to set information in local storage? Well, we can use use effect. Yep. Those who got the idea. Okay. I'm not going to tell. Just pause the lecture and see how you can utilize use effect. Okay, let me give you a hint. Every time we update this task list, we can call the use effect and update our local storage. Try to pause and visualize the code. If not, let's do this. Let's say use effect. It is going to have a function as an argument and then the dependency. The dependency is going to be task list. So every time we update this task list, we need to run this function. And inside this, all I'm going to do is call my local storage, set the item. And this time I need to select my task list. If it exists or not, I'm going to set. And I need to pass the item, which is going to be my this task list. Awesome. But I need to cover this with stringify. So I'm going to have uh, json dot stringify awesome so every time we update our task list we set this information inside local storage let's get here let's refresh and now you can see on the first run i guess uh, this was empty so we stored empty information let's do this now let's say task one you can see I have this ID, this name and this time. Let's do this again. Let's say task two, let's say task three. So we have these three objects. 
Now this is going to work every time we update our task list. That means if we delete anything, if we update anything, it is going to run. And that means our local storage is going to stay updated. We don't need to call this every time here and there. No, we don't need to do this. All we have to do is if I delete anything, it's gone. If I update anything, let's say updated, click on update and you can see it's updated here. That's the advantage of using use effect. Now, I hope with this right example, you understand why use effect is important. We can call this every time on our state update. Now here is some good news. If I refresh, my tasks are going to stay here. Not only this, if I open this on a new tab, my task is here. Not only this, I close my browser, open this again, my task is still going to stay here. Why? Because we have stored them inside our local storage. So they are going to stay here and we can access them anytime. There is other type of storage which is session storage and you can utilize it but the problem is it is going to remain for a single session whereas local is permanent. So even if you come back later you will have access to all the information. And how this is working? So if you remember on the first run uh, we are trying to call this one. So at, when we visit the website for the very first time this is not this doesn't exist. So we have empty array. But when we come later, maybe we have empty array or something because we run this use effect on the first time. So we set the local storage as empty array. Now when we use it later, we have this empty array exists. So we utilize it. If we add any type of element, we have this information updated and then we access this information through local storage. I hope you got the idea. Take some time, visualize because this is important. This help us to work with our storage now. And we need to use that storage for our theme as well. But before that, we need to apply that theme. So in the next lecture, what we are going to do is we are going to apply a theme as well as we are going to play with local storage again to store that theme information. What I mean by this is that if I select here, now if I refresh, my theme information is stored where well it's in local storage as theme let's do that then next one hey there welcome back now we are going to focus on theme part so all i have to do is jump on to header.js because here we have option to select any theme and do all this stuff so the best thing I can do is create a state and hold my theme information. And let's say here I have view state and by default I have a theme as dark. Okay. So now what I want is I want to apply this dark theme on my web page. So basically this is going to be our web page and what I need to do is on my HTML, I need to add a class called as dark and the theme will be applied. So behind the scene uh, with our CSS, uh, if you jump onto index.css, I have these theme. So with dark, I have the dark color with medium, with uh, light and then with gradients. So I have stored all the information. So that means for some reason, if I go on to document, dot document element dot uh, if i get into my class list this is basically our html and then our class list add uh, this theme it will be dark you can see it's dark now if this is light if i refresh you can see it's light so that's how we can work on the first thing I should do is on click I need to change the theme. So by default this is the theme but on click I can change the theme. I can change it to medium, dark, g1, g2, g3 and I need to apply that on our HTML route. So for that I can use use effect. 
so every time my theme is changed my class will be changed here you can see it's light let me refresh so it's it's still there i haven't saved the file so yeah so that's the case let me save this and it should be gone yeah so what i mean by this is i have a use effect this is going to be a function then the dependency will be theme so every time i update this theme i need to change the class yep you heard it right so i have this document dot document element dot class list dot add and i need to add my theme great so if i now i actually need to have a on click object on all of them so on click i just need to set theme so for example it will be on click here and i just need to get here and say set theme and i need to pass the theme that i want to set for this one it will be light and then uh, as i move forward so let me copy this add this here and i need to change this okay let me save get back here now if i click on this one you can see it's changed this one it's changed this one it's changed this one it's changed this one it's changed if i click on this one nothing works so what is happening is we are just adding them on the last one which we add in our sequence will work that's why i started from here so first i clicked on light it was working then medium it was working then dark and keep on following now if i click on light again it is already there but at the end so what i need to do first is i need to remove all the classes so with my document uh, dot document element i just need to remove the attribute entire attribute of my class once my class is removed i am going to add it again so it's currently medium that we have selected if i click on this one i have removed the previous one and added it here light yep yeah it's working great now the other information i need to do is which one is active class so active class will look something like this so all we have to do is whichever theme is active we can say active class yeah that is going to take some evaluation but that's easy all i have to do is get here now my class is going to be dynamic i am going to have a dynamic class i am going to check a condition if my theme is equals to equals to equals to light yep i should not say equals to equals to but yeah you know i am doing a comparison if this is light i am going to add some class if this is not light i am going to add some class so if this is light theme is light that means i am going to add the active class so it will be light and active and otherwise it is just going to be the light like this is just medium by default this is just dark this is g1 so i need to do this with every single one instead of light i need to check if this is medium or not so i'm checking if this is medium that means i'm going to add medium and active otherwise this will be just medium the similar condition will work on all of them let me save now i should get back here click on light click on medium actually then light then dark something like this i should play yeah so i hope you got the idea what we are trying to do now remember this evaluation you are, there are chances that you are going to get confused if this theme is equals to light then i am going to add a active now behind the scene the css for active is basically just enlarging this uh, height and width is increase for active theme and remember here i am applying class to this span not to the entire html page for entire html page we are doing it here we are applying the theme here we are just applying for that span so you might be thinking why i am applying light when i am not active well you are applying to this small box by default 
and whichever is active, the box is bigger. That's it. Theme is applied here in this use effect actually. So every time we update a theme, we click on this on click, we set the theme to light, we get inside our use effect, we remove the old class, add the new class, that's it. Since the dependency is theme, so if I click on set theme again to dark, we will call this, remove the previous class, add the new class. That's how it is going to work. If I click on dark, remove the previous class, add this class, you can see here we have active theme and on top we have dark. This looks great. If I refresh, I get back to light. Why? Well, default is light. We can set it to medium, whatever we want, but we are still not storing the information. That means we are not storing inside our local storage. Uh, it's application here. We don't have theme. Either take it as a homework or uh, let's do this right now only that either you can pause and do it yourself or let's let's do it so what we need to do is we need to access information so the best thing we can do we can access it here if we don't have that information it will be medium something like we did with our task list so i'm going to have my local storage i am going to get the item if and the item is my theme and remember whatever we are trying to access we need to parse it basically so i'm going to have a json dot parse great so i'm trying to fetch that information if it exists great otherwise it's medium currently it doesn't exist so if this is medium by default or whatever the information is we need to set it on every update where we need to set on local storage so i'm going to select my local storage set item what i item i need to set my theme and what is going to be the value well it is just going to be the theme now again this value should be stringify so i'm going to convert this use my json dot stringify save and if i get back here now i have this theme because on first run we checked our json it's empty we took our medium as our theme state then get a here we set the medium as our local storage get here refresh now if i update now every time i update i get inside my use effect update the local storage update the class awesome that's all our project is ready we implemented the ui part we implemented the logic part we implemented the functionality part and we implemented now the local storage part also i hope you get the actual use case of this use effect now i tried to make it twice so i hope you got the idea and that's it that's all for this one now we just need to deploy it either on versal or netlify there are two ways by which we can deploy it and i am going to talk more about deployment in the next lecture thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us deploy our project on an online server so there are two ways by which we can deploy either the one that is recommended uh, as we move forward with a bigger project we are going to utilize it or the other one which is also recommended but there is some issue let's talk about both the first one is to push your project from your local to a github repository or bitbucket basically a git repository and then from your git repository to versal netlify or whatever the server we are using so that means you connect your local code base through git to a repository github bitbucket or any other and then the github will be connected to our versal or netlify or whatever the server we are working it's great because you can do a small change later on push on to github then from github to push on to netlify then maybe you want to add something else you do that change and you can keep on working in a continuous way even after deploying the project 
that's the first way recommended uh, it's going to take time the other way which we are going to use right now because since our project is currently small and i want to talk about that method as well so the other way is to simply create a build and then upload that build on netlify that means a one time task that's it if we need to update anything in future we need to again create a build and do that manually with the whole first method everything is automated we just need to set up github once and netlify once then it's automated with the second one we need to do every task manually so let's talk about second one for now and from the next project everything we are going to do will be through the first process so here jump on to netlify if you are a new user register otherwise log in uh, let me do a quick login with the help of my github it's a free account on github as well so just create an account once you are here all you have to do is just get into a new website and click on deploy manually you will be on this particular page which is app.netlify.com/drop and the other thing i need to do is i need to stop my server get here control c to stop my server make sure you are inside your taskmate and you need to run the command npm run build yep you just need to run this command this is going to create a build folder so all you have to do is just select your folder and then you can drag and drop here so if you observe here i can drag and drop or you can just select the folder with the click option that's it this looks fine make sure you remove your ad blocker or different type of extension uh, which are already installed because it is going to give you an error uh, let me see it is going to take few minutes but uh, since it's a manual deploy in the meantime you can also fix your site url so this is our current site url if i open yeah my website is working and here i can get into my domain setting and here i have option to edit the name so i can give it a name whatever i want i can say taskmate project uh, since i already have a url taskmate dash ul i can say ss shubham sharda so it will be taskmate dash ss if i save this one now this is the updated url and this is the website so if i save any task let's say task one and if i change this theme refresh things are stored in my local storage get here get into application now the local storage is for my if you observe this it is for taskmate-ss.netlify.app earlier this local storage for local host here it was for taskmate-ul i hope you got the idea and you understood how to start a project build a project and deploy it don't worry we will also explore the other deployment method since we are going to use it on all other projects so that's all that's how we are going to deploy this one now there is a problem that if we need to do any type of change here we need to create a build again get here and get into my deploys for this particular project and upload it here the build new build again so for any small change we need to do this again and again we can do that it's manual process but our preference should be some automated one so that's how you are going to update i hope you now understand how to update your domain name as well get into site overview update the domain name one last thing currently i have divided stuff into app.css and index.css if you want you can divide them into dedicated component css file for example here i have header for the entire header part remember this one then i have add task for my add task part and then i have show task for my show task.js so that's how i have divided this with properly and now you have option to divide it according to your requirement okay great and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back shubham this side now let us start our journey with react router if you remember i mentioned that react is a library and not a framework 
Now there are some missing pieces with React as a framework. Like why I don't consider React as a framework because we don't have a router with React. So React is a library. We have another library which is known as React router and we are going to install it and we are going to use it in our project now. That means together these two can be powerful. And now I feel okay React is behaving somewhat like a framework. So yeah, this is the missing piece that I really want to use. Now what this missing piece do and what is the term router mean? And what is this router? So basically if you visit any website in the world, you will see multiple pages. You can jump onto a new tab. You will have option about learn maybe. If I click on API, you can see this is a new web page. If I click on something else, it's a new web page. Till now, we have been working with localhost on a single page only. We haven't included any type of link. We haven't included any type of tab for our navigation. That means we were working on a single page only. React is a single page application, but we can divide things according to component. Let me explain what our requirement currently is. Suppose, okay, don't worry, we are not going to build this right now, but Suppose this is an application and we jump here on our products and we get information about all our products using slash products. So this is a route basically which tell reacts okay render certain component for our product. There will be certain common component for our entire website like header and footer but there will be unique components according to our page. Now if I just open this one you will see it's product slash my ID. So now I am telling react. Okay, this is the ID. Try to render a new component according to that. So let me give you a step by step idea. When I am on home page, I am rendering my top header. I am rendering some other content and then my footer. That's step one. When I get into my products, I already have my header. So I'm not reloading any new page. If you check, if I jump here, you can see it's not re-rendering. If I get here, you can see there is no refresh actually. It's just rendering the component which I require. Let me get into my elements. So if I'm inside my elements and if you see which component is going to load. So if I suppose if I open any product, you can see I'm rendering my main component. So my header and my footer is constant. I'm not reloading. If I reload anything, you will see entire web page reload. So that's the most common thing. Most websites render everything again. So if I visit their home, they will render everything. If I visit any product, they will render everything. But with react, it's a single page application. We just render the unique component. And here, if I give you the other idea, suppose I am on products. I will mention that this is the route. This is the path. If I am on this path, then render product list component. Then I will also mention a route that if I am on products with an ID, then render product detail component. And this will be this component will be same for all type of product page. Suppose I'm on the other one. So the component design is same. I'm just filling the information like I'm just adding a title. I'm adding some title. I'm adding image. So the component is same. I'm just adding information. That's how it is going to work. I know this might sound confusing right now, but you just need to understand one thing that we can add multiple pages in react and everything is handled by component. If I have a page, I just need to mention which component I need to load. Now there are a lot of powers we have because of react router that we are going to explore in this whole section. That's it. That's the major point. The other point was that everything happens on a single page. That means we don't refresh the entire page. We just render the required stuff. One quick example I can give you is if I do some manual changes here, let's say test. If you remember, I did this initially as well, but now since we are going to work on it, it's good time to give you this example again. So if I'm on test, if I get onto a new page, you can see the test is still there because we haven't refreshed. 
this is a manual change. If I open any product, you can see this is still there. But if I refresh this, it's gone. You can see we reloaded everything. Now on reload, there is cost to load an image, to load some text. On reload, performance cost is expensive. So these are the two things that I want to mention. Everything is on a single page and we can load specific component according to our route. Yep, this is the home route. Okay, that's it. Now let me jump on to our editor. Now this time I have created a base structure because I don't want to do everything from basics like create react app and everything I did already. So you don't have to watch me doing this again and again. So what I did is I created a folder as rootmate. So inside this, I'm going to have my entire project. Now the first thing I did is I removed all the unwanted stuff. I added my basic CSS inside app.css and index.css and I have removed the unwanted code from these two files. The next thing I did is I added my asset and my logo. Again inside my public, I replaced all the static stuff and I just updated the title and my favicon and everything. One other quick step I did is I get into my component and created some base component. For example, I have a product list page, then product detail page, then home page, then I have few component for header, footer and contact page, something like this. So this is going to be the component. And then this is of no use. I just added so I have this uh, const products. We are not going to utilize it. You don't need it. I just want to copy paste. So I just uh, stored it here. One other thing I have is this asset folder inside this I have a placeholder image and I have kept my logo here as well. So this placeholder image is just a basic image uh, that we can use anywhere. So we don't have to have a fixed product image. This is just product one, two, three. So I can just have this image. That's it. That's the base structure ready. Now the next step is to install our react router. So all we have to do is just go with npm install. Then I need to install react router dom at the rate six. Make sure you are using at the rate six to install the version six latest version six. Make sure you use version six only because you are going to have a difference with seven and five. Suppose maybe you are maybe you are trying to use five. There will be here and there syntax difference. Similarly, in future, whenever they are going to launch seven, they will have difference with syntax. So it's better to install the version which I'm using. Let me press enter. Yeah, that's done. Let me close this one for now. Get into my package.json and here you can see I have react router DOM. Awesome. Let me close this one. So that is our base structure ready. Now the next step is to create a base user interface. So we can have things to visualize. Our aim is to work with links, work with tabs, open some products, something like this. If I click here, I need some type of structure like this. If I open this one, I need something like this. So it is going to be easy for us to differentiate what route is going to return what. So that's what we are going to do in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us start basic of our router. So what we need to do is we need to understand how to have this functionality. We already installed it, but what type of syntax we need to use, how to activate this functionality. Do we need to run any type of command to have this route functionality? Well, yes, we need to utilize some wrapper. We need to utilize some type of command that we need to discuss initially. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get here inside my source, inside my app.js and here we need to add all our router. As we grow, what we do is we usually create a separate file for that. But for now, we are going to write everything here. I will be mentioning everything step by step. So after the installation part, we need to wrap our entire application with a wrapper that will give us the power to use router and all the other type of syntax and tags. So what is a wrapper? Well, basically it is going to be a tag that is going to cover our entire application, our entire app. 
we can either add it at the top and bottom here so we will cover it or we can get here inside our index.js and add above our app and close below our app so our app will be inside it let me give you an idea step by step so let me open my app.js here and what we need to do is we need to import it let's say import it is going to be browser router so let's say and we are going to import it from our react router dom yep so this is going to be the wrapper and how we are going to utilize it well just like the component that we use so all i have to do is have this here and then a closing tag here and i take this here have it here and i wrap my entire application so every component every other stuff everything will be inside here now the easier way that i think is to wrap this entire app here only so we don't have to worry much and do any other type of stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take it here and add the import here and take this here add it just above my app oh, much easier so now we have this here also let me undo all this stuff here looks good so our app is going to remain as it is but we have wrapped our app with a browser router one more thing you can do which is pretty common and you might get confused is we can rename this we can just say it as router you will see this with multiple projects not just mine but online as well so you can just use router now so this is pretty common practice that you will notice online for now i'm just going to say browser router now how we are going to start now remember whenever we visit any type of index page by default we are on home page so that means this is our home page now we need functionality to have multiple route so we are going to add that setting here what i'm going to do first is to import certain things so there are two important things that we need to import the first one is our routes and the second one is going to be route I know the name is confusing but you will understand why and this is also going to be from react router dom and now here i can mention everything what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove stuff from here and i'm going to utilize my routes and router so we need to utilize this route tag so it is basically a cover that is going to handle individual route let me explain what I'm going to have route and then closing tag route. Okay, so this is going to be a cover or you can say as a simple tag and inside this I am going to have individual route. Yep. So suppose I have a route for my home page, then I have route for my product list page and then I have a route for individual product page, something like this or maybe our contact us page. Now how we need to define them or what information we need to provide. So the first information we need to provide is path that is what is going to be the URL structure. So if I say if I'm on home page that is just the slash I need to load some type of element. So here I'm going to have a element tag and I just need to mention which component I'm going to load. So let me try to import or uh, okay I'm going to import them later but I'm just going to give you an example suppose I'm going to import the home component here. So whenever we land on this route, this particular path, we are going to render the home component. Similarly, if I add few other, suppose if I land on products, then I need to render product list component. And suppose if I land on products slash one, 001 that is my id initially then i need to render product detail component i have product detail right okay yeah so that's how i am going to load them so let me load this home so let me load all of them uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a import uh, here i will have home from 
it will be from my component and slash home similarly i need to add so i'm going to have product list then i'm going to have product detail then i'm going to have a contact us as well so i'm going to just say contact looks good to me now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get here uh, we don't have any error and by default we are on home so we are having information about our home component if i add a slash here you can see it's working now the next thing i'm going to do is the next is our products if i open this one go with slash products enter you can see i got my product list then what i'm going to have is suppose this one individual element which is going to be product detail and here we have product detail the next one is about our contact so let's say here contact and this is working fine so that's how we need to add them now there are a lot of things that we need to cover but this was the base structure that we are going to have a wrapper that is going to cover our app and we call it as browser router then we are going to have routes that is going to bundle every individual route so this is like the top thing and inside this we are going to have the individual routes this individual route required two important thing the first one is path so we can match on which url we are and then the element so we can mention which is the component that we need to load when we are here now the fun thing is this is just the middle part here on the top i can add a header uh, let's say i can have some type of header here and for now i'm just going to say header and i can just say footer let me save get back here so you can see i have this header i have this footer now if i go on my home page you can see i still have my header i still have my footer if i go on to my products page you can see i have my header i have my footer and then the products page now at this point of time we are refreshing every single time we are not rendering single component what we are doing is we are visiting them by going on to the url and entering as a new request so we are going to have this refresh but if we navigate through our website through links it is not going to have a proper refresh if you see this if you navigate here you don't see a refresh but here we are trying to visit different pages it's actually a refresh we are going to cover this in next one but i hope you got the base idea browser router routes route that's it and then we have path and element now in the next one we are going to improve our structure a bit uh, so we can play with more information about our route and how to have things dynamically so that's all for this lecture and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us quickly try to improve our structure so at this point of time i have everything inside my dev then i have created this header so instead of this let's have a proper header uh, component so i'm going to have a header component and here i am going to have a footer component and i need to import them from top so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a import the first one will be for my header from and it is going to be from components slash my header similarly i need to have it for my footer save okay looks good so now we have a proper base structure now one thing a lot of people do is they try to remove this it's okay you can have a dev or not you can use fragments totally according to your requirement the other thing that we will do later is to move everything to a different folder so we don't have a mess it's our personal choice so for now let's stay here and work on it so that's how you can add header now let me jump here on my header so i can create a base structure for now and then we are going to play with that base structure 
and I will explain you things like why to use certain tag and why not to use them. So let me get into my header and first let's create a base header structure and this should be easy because we have been doing this multiple times. So here I am going to have my header tag inside this I am going to have a, a tag that is going to cover my image and name. Now we are going to use H tags. Now you will see me using navigation and linking in this section a lot because we are going to play with it. Then I am going to have a nav tag now because I need navigation. I need home, product page, contact tab like this. So yeah, I am going to have a navigation and I am going to give it a class as navigation. And here inside a tag, I need to add lot of stuff. But before that, let me give it a class as logo. Awesome. Now this a tag should uh, just go on to the home. So I'm going to have a slash. And inside this, I am going to have my IMG that is going to have my logo. So I need to import it. I'm going to call it logo anyway. So I'm going to have my import that is going to be my logo from and this is going to be from my assets and then logo dot png awesome that is done i'm going to have route mate logo this looks good to me then i am going to have a span so i can mention my company name trademark name or website name something like this let's say route mate awesome now inside this navigation what i'm going to have is link i am going to have a link that is going to be for my home and i'm going to call it as home then again i'm going to have a a tag that is going to be for my products maybe so this is going to show product list and this is going to be products then again i'm going to have another a tag that is going to be for my contact Let's say contact, contact, awesome. So this looks good. Let me also open footer, mm, yeah. And this should be easy. Let's say I have a footer. Inside this, I just need to have one quick text. Let's say 2030 trademark or something, uh, route mate. Let me save and also with my header, I have these individual a tag. I need to add a class name. So they looks good. I'm going to say link. Awesome. Let me save get back here. Okay. So this is our current header. This is great. We have this. If I click on home, I get on home. If I click on products, I am on products. If I click on contact, I am on contact. So we got the navigation and this is the footer. The problem you are going to see is this is not a single page application right now. Suppose uh, I get here inside my, suppose if I click on products, you will see everything is reloading. If I click on contact, you see everything is reloading because when we use a tag, a tag basically sends a proper new refresh call new render request for entire page entire website this is not component rendering right now this is actually entire refresh so this works well when we are just creating a html template using html css javascript but as soon as we are working on react this is not going to work so there is alternative to a tag that is going to be link and nav link that we are going to talk about but I hope you got the idea that this is the current structure, why we are not going to use a tag and what is the alternative link and nav link. Once we use them, you will get an idea. So this is done. This structure is done. That's what that was the main thing. Let me close this for now. And one thing we can do is since we know this is going to be our header, this is going to be our footer. What if we cover everything inside main? Because ultimately all of this is going to be the between part, the part that we need in the middle. So if I save this, now you can see things are better because we have given certain height to this main. 
if I get here inside my index and here you can see I have max minimum height as 100 VH. So if I go with 90, save and if I get here, you can see it's a big page now and this help us to define, okay, we have space and we can cover route. We just need to have routes, but we can cover, we can add stuff above and below it. Okay, so that was the first major information. Now let me jump onto my A tag again. So what we need to use uh, if we don't want a tag, well, we can utilize link. Yep. So all I have to do is get here, get into my import mode and here I need to import link from my react router DOM. Yep. And there is something else which is nav link. We are also going to use it, but first add link now uh, here instead of a tag, we are going to have link everywhere. So instead of a, let's have link. You can also click on, you can just click uh, by pressing alt key and then you can paste them together. Now that's done. So instead of a tag, we are going to use link, but instead of HRF, we need to use two. Yep. So with link, we need to add a two instead of HRF. So here, this will be two, then this will be two then this will be two. If I save this one, now if I get back here, okay, refresh. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to make a single page test. So that means now our complete website should behave like a single page. And if I click on anything, it should not refresh, entirely refresh like it was doing before. It should just render the component that is changing, which is my main. So suppose if I, if you observe these, if I click on products, you can see only main was updated. That is this tip. If I click on contact, you can see only this home products contact. You can see it's now faster because we are not rendering again. So if I get here, home products, contact home products, contact, you can see it's pretty fast and you can also observe the change in URL here contact, product, home, that's how it is going to work. And we are only rendering the required stuff. And behind the scene, what happened is if we click on something, we first get into the index, we get into the app and here what we do is we render the entire page from top to bottom. We render the header and then we find what component we need to render. And then we try to match the path. So if we are on home page, we will render this skip all the routes and render our footer. Suppose if we are calling the product page, so we will render this and then render our footer. So that's how this is going to work. So I hope you got the idea what link do it. It is basically a tag, but without the refresh functionality, but with the power of rendering only the stuff that is required. Okay. Now what is this nav link? Well, nav link is just the link, but it gave us a special power that we can utilize for our navigation. Now let me replace everything with nav link here for my navigation. Now what nav link do is it add active class automatically. If I'm on that particular page, suppose if I'm on home page, it will add an active class here inside my navigation. Or maybe if I am on product page, it will add a active class here. Let me give you an example. If I get here and here, if you observe, I will have something as active. So if I click on products, you can see this is active. If I click on contact, you can see this is active and product is not, uh, the active is gone. But here a problem is that home is always active. You can see this active class for home. If I click on product, product is active. If I click on contact, now contact is active and product is not. So why home is always active? So what happened here is when I jump onto this particular URL, my nav link try to match with all the possible nav links. If they match, then it is going to say active. Otherwise, no. So this is going to match with all of them. Basically, that means the initial slash is going to match every time, no matter what we do. So what we have to do is we need to add a end. 
Now this means that this should be exact. If this is exact, only one slash is there. That means if we only have a home page, then we are going to have this as active. Otherwise, we will match with others. Let me save, get back here. Now you can see home is gone. So if I say home, that means I have a slash here. So home is active. If I go on product, now product is active. If I go on contact, now contact is active. So that's how this whole nav work. It basically adds a active class. And here I have defined background color and border radius for my active. So you see a different type of visual. And one important thing, suppose I am on contact. If I go on home from here, ultimately this will turn into active because it is going to match our URL and we are on a home page. So this will be active. Now how I get this information where well, I was reading documentation earlier, it was exact, but now they have this end the recent change. So that is why the version is important and version five, it was exact and version six, it is end. So that's it. That's all about our link and nav link. Now we can have this link everywhere. That means we are not going to utilize a tag. We use a tag when we want to send to a different website. Suppose I have some footer tag and I want to send on maybe on Facebook, on my social media icons, my YouTube, then I'm going to use a tag link and nav link is only used to visit our own website path path that we have mentioned in our route. So here the path is slash product, which is a route here. The path is uh, slash which is our home route. So the nav and links are great when we are only working with our own routes. Let's do this with our footer as well. So we have this footer. What I'm going to do is have a link. So let me copy this one. And on the top, I am going to have this. I don't require nav link. Remove this, have this link. So I am going to utilize link and slash link to close this. In between this, I am going to have this information. And instead of href, I am going to use two. That will be my slash because I want to get into home. If I get here, you can see now it's clickable. But first, let me go on to contact. You can see I am on contact page. If I click on this, you can see now I am on home. One thing you will uh, you can also notice from here. If I am on contact, my current active is contact active for contact. If I click here, this is active and we are not refreshing the entire page. Awesome. I hope you got the idea. This was important. One other information that is left is that you don't need to close this route. You can also utilize a self closing tag and it should work fine. So instead of this, you can also use something like self closing tag. Both are going to work just like our component. This is also self closing if we want. And if you, I refresh, things are still working fine. That's all for this lecture. I hope you got the idea about nav link and link. Now in the next one, I am quickly going to touch about the props for our component and focus on navigation, not the nav link, but the navigation. So thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now in this lecture, we are going to discuss about navigation. So there are two options. You will see me using use navigate hook and then you will also see me using navigate component, something like this. Now what is this and how we are going to play with it? Well, whenever we are working inside some component, you will see me using the hook use navigate or something like this. And whenever we are working with maybe route or Maybe we want to render some type of stuff according to user condition. Then you will see me using navigate the component one. Uh, let's take practical example. Now, before that, I just did a small change. So I added a class as component with the, each one of them uh, with the contact with my home, with my product detail and product list. The reason is so it's pretty 
clear and visible at the time of recording otherwise this was looking too small so i just added box shadow and increased the font size yep get back here now we need to focus on the navigation part now suppose i am on contact page suppose and here let me remove or i should say just add some fragment add this here yep and what i need to do is i want to add a button and the button is going to maybe move me towards home or something like this so i can just add a button and here i can add information back to home and this button needs to do something i am going to add a on click function and i am going to have handle submit something like this and then i am going to just have a function let's say const my handle submit so we need to do certain task maybe once we click on this button we need to send something to api or do some task for now i am going to just do a console log uh, dash 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 once that console log is done we need to move to our home page because our task is done so it can be something like you clicked on a submit form so the submit form need to send all the data to our database and then we need to return to home page something like this it can be anything but we now need to move towards a different url and how we are going to do that well for that we have a hook called as use navigate so all we have to do is first import it so i'm going to have import and this is going to be use navigate and this will be from my react router dom now once that is done now since it's a hook we need to just initiate it so i'm going to have a const i'm going to have my navigate equals to and i just need to call this one now this is going to hold the power to just navigate any stuff so inside our handle submit if after doing all the console log all the api task or anything now i have the option to navigate stuff to any page maybe i want to move towards home page i can do that i can have slash that's it now this is was our contact page so if i get here get into my contact page click on back home you can see i'm now back to home now it can be anything it can be maybe our products page i can do that get here get into my contact back home now this time i am into my product list page so that's how this navigate is important now there are certain condition when you need to return something and during that you can have return navigate it is going to work exactly the same contact click here and i am on navigate now one thing uh, we need to track is our console log because that is the task that we are doing so if i get here get into my contact clear this up now that means once i click on this submit button suppose for my form i am going to have information i am going to get here i need to send all my data from the form to maybe my uh, backend and then i am going to uh, go to my home page something like this so i am going to have this as submit for example submit form save so after all the task is done if i click here you can see i got the console and i am back on my home page so that's how things are going to work now there are lot of things that can happen within this submit for example we need to create a pop up and or we need to show some information that your form is submitted and then we are going to navigate this but the basic aim was to use this hook and navigate within our component so i hope you got the idea now the other one was if you remember i also told you that we can utilize a uh, navigate something like this and this works great at the time of route and condition what i mean by this so let me jump on to my route let me get here get into my app.js now suppose i have a route something like admin which is pretty important let's say admin now what i want is i want to add condition inside my element so the first thing i am going to do is i am going to have a navigate and 
I can just add a two equals to slash. So this is a component with some direction. That means the link, um, you can say href. And I need to import this. So I'm going to import this from my React Router DOM, navigate, and let me save. Now if I get here, if I visit my page, everything is working fine, no error. Now if I get here to my admin, you can see I am reverted back to my home page. What I just did is, I just, just navigated like this only, exactly like this, but on my route level. Here I don't need to pass any type of component or anything. If someone is visiting my admin, I'm just going to redirect them. It can be any other page. I can say products. If I get here, get into my admin now, you can see I moved to products. So this is important. Now what I was talking about condition is, suppose I have a user here. Let's say user const user equals to false for current. Now if here I can have a condition, I am going to check if user is true, then I'm going to navigate to some stuff otherwise to my product. So here if user is true, then maybe I'm going to navigate to, um, let's say I have a component as admin, then I'm going to load this admin. Otherwise I'm going to go back to home page. Let's add this condition. Let's create a new component, a new, let's say admin.js, RAFC, I have this admin. Let's add a class as component. Great, and I just need to import it at the top. Let's say import, which is going to be my admin. I know this is looking uh, pretty much of mess right now, but we have a solution for this, which we'll be discussing by the end of the section. It's a different concept. Component slash admin. Okay, great. Now, if my admin is true, then I'm going to have this component. Otherwise, I'm just going to move to home. So if I say admin, now I'm moved to home because my admin is false. If I say my admin is true, get here. Now, if I try to visit here, admin, you can see it's working. So I can have something like welcome to dashboard or some other message. Welcome to admin section. Now here I took this hand coded value of user, but what happened is maybe we are logged in and then we have some value of user in terms of state or maybe in local storage or somewhere else. So we have option to map the condition and then show component according to our condition. Uh, and this works great with admin, with profiles and few other stuff, maybe with login page, or registration page. So if we are already logged in, suppose instead of user, we have logged in something logged in. Uh, I have something like logged in status. And if my logged in status is true, then I should be redirected from my login and my registration page because I'm already logged in. And if my login status is false, then I should be redirected from my profile page. I should be redirected towards my login and my home page. So I can say this and it is going to work fine. Suppose I want my product to be accessed by uh, logged in user only or user only. So I can add this type of condition here as well. That if a user is true, then I should show the product detail. Otherwise, just return this to somewhere else. I It's not compulsory to return at home. I can return it to any page. So if someone is visiting profile, I will return it to login or registration page. Or if a user is already logged in, so I will return them to profile page or home page, something like this. So I hope you got the idea. What is navigate and what is this use navigate? We use navigate in terms of inside the component purpose and we use this navigate for our routing purpose. Now remember we can use this here as well, but it will work differently. So let's stick to their own use cases right now. 
That's all. I hope you got the idea in terms of navigation. Now in the next one, we are going to understand about our ID. So we don't need this to be manual. We need to have some sort of dynamic values. Otherwise, suppose if I have thousand products, I don't need to create thousand URL. I should have something dynamic here that we will be discussing in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us talk about parameters. So when we are working with any type of route, we have option to add parameter to avoid repetitive stuff. That means suppose I have here this ID. If this is only just one link, it's great. But we know here we can have multiple product. I can have a product with ID two, then ID three and keep on following. And if I right now try to visit ID two, Let's say I have this product inside this, I go with 1002 and it should not work. So we have a header, we have a footer, but the middle thing, which is about our router is missing now. Well, because we don't have a matching location about 1002. Now what I want is I want to have a dynamic value, which I can capture and then I can display one component for all that value. So it can be two, three, four, five, something like this. That's where this dynamic parameter come into picture. So what I can do is I can use colon and I can give a term to this dynamic value. For now, I am going to give ID. Remember now this ID is important because I need to capture this ID everywhere. Let me save, get inside my product detail and here I can work on that ID. Basically I can access that ID. Now if I visit here, uh, it should work now. Let me clear, refresh. Yeah, it's two, it's three, it's four. All the pages are going to work. So I can get access to this information here on this particular page using multiple things actually. So there is the common one is use param. Uh, let me import it. So let's say import, I am going to have use params which is parameter from my react router dom okay great now since this is a hook what i need to do i need to just have access to that information let's say const params equals to use params and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do console log for now but later on i'm going to explain how we use this let me save get back here you can see I get information that ID is 1004. Now we can add more information to be honest, not just ID. Let's say I have uh, then ID, then I have um, then I have some country ID or any other information. You will see there are two type of ID. Then there is there can be something like name. So I have name or I can have slug type of thing. So it's according to the website that you are working and then I have something like ID and then if I get here, I uh, you know I got an error, but I can have, so maybe I have JBL headphone Z10, then I have that ID that is 1001. If I enter, you can see I got the name and ID. So basically I get access to all the parameters that I'm dealing with parameters after this product slash after this all of this is parameter that I'm trying to access here and then whatever I want to do I can do inside our product detail page uh, for now let me remove this and go back to our ID only remove this yeah yeah get here yeah so this is my ID now the important thing is here we have access to this ID. That means I can send a request to my database, get the product for that ID because I know it's a product page. I know I got from here. Uh, here I can use a use effect, send a fetch request to get information about that particular product. So params.id is going to give me that product ID. And then I can access all the information about this product. Once I get that, I can display here with my JSX. 
for now i'm just going to say product and since i have access to this product id i can display it here i can just utilize my dynamic values and i can say this product and product id and i can remove this console if i save get back here you can see 1001 or i can just remove this as well yep it's great now i can access any type of id and it will be dynamic i can have specific image for this product i can have description anything that i want that i can fetch through my database so that's how this is going to work and it's interesting concept now the other one similar to our use params we have search param it basically help us to access all type of other parameter maybe you are using question mark then maybe you are using parameter for your keyword so basically you are trying to search something and then in your url you might have a query you might have other parameters like in stock is true or any other type of filter for example here maybe i'm on my products page and here i have search param like question mark then query equals to react something like this now if i need to access this i am going to utilize search param if it was dynamic connected to our route itself we can access it through use param but here this is something different these are specific parameters and for them we need search param so let's get into my product list and here let me import it let's say import it is going to be use search params and i need to import it from react router dom now this works a bit like state in the type of importing and everything so i'm going to have a constant it is going to return me two things the first thing is to access this information the second thing is to change it maybe we want to set it so i'm just going to access the information which is search params and i can directly use this now for now let's get here and do a console log console.log let's say search param now let me save this one get back here it's empty right now but i know i need to fetch information for my qe parameter so i can do dot get and here i can pass whichever the key term is so if i say q get back here and here you can see i have access to react now there can be other type of parameter maybe i have and and so this can be my keyword at the time of search suppose so it is my keyword and then i have other filter uh, suppose and my second filter is about my price range or stock so i can say in stock equals to true maybe the third one i have information is about rating which is equals to 4 if i have something some url like this i need to get here now it is not q it is keyword and i can have information about each one of them let's say keyword then then i have in stock then rating let me save get back here you can see react true and 4 then using this information maybe you, we want to do some type of filtering send a new request whatever we want to do we can do that so let me separate this here so it's easy for you to replicate later yeah let me save get back here and here you can see things are working fine so it totally depends on us what type of parameters we are using so that's the second method which is search params and it works pretty well uh, during filtering stuff during search stuff or just uh, having some information now i am also going to discuss about the third one which is pretty common which is location now use location basically gives us information about everything and it can be our hash or anything else so let's say use location uh, here let me delete these two going to comment this one and then here i'm going to have const remember this also returns a set option so something like set search param 
uh, calling that we can update the search basically but uh, let me get here const and here I can have my location I can use my location that's it let me try to do console log let me save get back here now you can see all the information so this gave us information about our hash our key our path our search and our state so what we are getting is uh, let me also add a hash let me add a hash as top maybe we got from top to bottom or something like this so if we observe here our hash is top i got this information that means uh, keys default path name is basically this on which page we are and then search is basically everything that we are passing in terms of parameter search parameter so here you can see so this is useful uh, also again it has multiple use cases maybe we need to send our api request or maybe we are trying to filter certain stuff so this works well you get access to information so when you just need the dynamic value this id is great and we can use use param because it's a specific use case if you observe here i am taking different example on product page so this works great when we need to fetch the id then if i am on product page i i am going to have different other parameter then i am going to utilize search param so i can have information about my keyword other terms or if i need to have access to everything then i am going to utilize use location the problem with use location is we get everything now we need to filter out stuff on our own whereas when i am using search param i can just get information for that particular keyword if i want for keyword if i want for query if i want for stock my rating i can get that individually they have their own use cases uh, depending on our requirement i'm going to do this here so it will be easy for you to copy later yeah so that's all this is also going to work that's all we got a lot of information here thank you for following and in the next one i am going to talk about a case where we don't have any type of route that means maybe we entered something random maybe we entered something like now i want to move to 404 page not found if you remember there is some stuff like that so suppose here i got this so what it is showing is not found this page doesn't exist uh, we have this header we have this footer but we need to show this stuff so basically we need to create a component and let's discuss about this in next one but i hope you got the idea that page doesn't exist no uh, match route then we need to do some task hey there welcome back now let us create a condition for page 404 that means no page found no route found something like this so all we have to do is at the end we can have a route basically um, yeah i can have a route with a path that is matching to everything so we go from top to bottom we first match with this then this then this then this then this okay let's say admin if we are not able to find any one of them then we are going to get inside our path uh, it's everything basically and here i can mention which component to load i can mention uh, a new component basically i can say page not found something like this so i can have a component page not found and i can save this one i need to create this so let's get here uh since we don't have this right now i need to go with page not found copy paste get into my component create a new file dot js rafc remove this 404 oops 
let me save get back here now you can see 404 oops let me clear this refresh again yeah no errors so that's how this is going to work that means i uh, if i randomly visit any type of uh maybe wrong wrong link maybe i visit a link of login right now it is going to be 404 oops now this trick also works here as well so if i go here uh if i have this user i don't want to redirect i can show this it's work to fake stuff for example if my user is false and if it if they try to visit admin section it will show 404 oops but if my user is true now they visit this link they have welcome to admin section something like this can work to just have improved routes. I hope you got the idea how to create something like a page 404. Now before ending this lecture, let me also experiment with the product ID. Let's say I get here, I get into one and then if I add certain information. Now if you observe this is products, this is ID, but now there is no matching URL or no matching route to something like this. So what happened is it moves towards 404 because something like this doesn't exist. But if I open this, this is going to work. But if I add any other information, it is not going to be working. Let's say I'm on contact, things are working. But suppose if I add any other information, let's say ABC, enter, it's not going to work. Similarly, if with every URL. So if I add any other information after my home page, if these are not mapped, then it will be here. If I add any other information after my products, then it will go inside here because we have ID. But if I add any other information after my ID, it is going to get here. So that's how things are navigated. Remember, it is going from top to bottom. One more thing that you might be asking, and I already mentioned it, that you can pass information props with these component these are normal component you can pass them so for example here i can pass a component like title and i can say 404 and then inside here i can access this title like normal prop and here i can use it let me save get back here you can get here to random abc you can see it's still showing 404 so you can pass props to your component. I hope you got the idea. So that's all for this lecture. In the next one, we are going to discuss about nesting. Yep, we can nest routes as well. Something like our contact. Currently we have contact, but suppose I have contact US, I have contact Europe. So I need to show some common information on all and then uh, individual component for each one of them. Okay, I, I will be discussing them in the next one. That's all for now. Hey there, welcome back. Now we are going to discuss about nested route. What I mean by this is, suppose I have this route. Now uh, I have another link, uh, which is going to be slash in that is for India. Then I have another one which is going to be for maybe Europe, let's say EU. And then I have another one uh, which is going to be for US, let's say US. So I want this information to be common on all of them. So suppose I have this uh, on home, let's say this should appear on all of them and then there can be any form and everything. But if I say if I visit this IN. I, I should have this information along with that Indian information. So what I mean by this is, okay, let me save this and get here. So what I mean by this is that I need to get this component as well as the Indian component. If I go with Europe, I need this component as well as the Europe component. If I go with US, I need this component as well as the US component and if I go with anything else ABC I should get a 404 component. So I hope you got the idea what our requirement is that this should be common but then the other component as well. How we can do that? 
either we can define individual component for all of them and then copy this on all of them or we can use nested route so i am going to have this route and instead of this self closing one now i am going to have the closing tag for this which is going to be slash route let me take all these three that should be inside here let me indent and since this is contact, this should be direct IN, this is EU, this is US and here I can define component for this which is contact in, I have already created it. Uh, for EU it is EU, for US it is US. Now if I save, I can now have this whole section. So if I visit contact, just contact, it will open my contact, but if I open contact slash in then it is going to get into contact in if i go with contact slash eu then it will go with contact eu this contact is going to be there but then this will be there if i get here i got an error because i haven't imported and you can see what mess we are doing at the top but remember i i have a solution for this and we are going to talk about it once we have once we complete entire routing because this is intentional I want to talk about the structuring part so I am going to just import my contact uh, in from go with my component and then contact in I need to do similar job with my EU and US let's say EU and then us let me save get back here get here uh, go with my contact still working fine to be honest this is not going to work let's say in okay this is working fine but i don't have access to the indian component this in I don't see IN, I see contact but I don't see IN component. Uh, let's say US, go with my US, I don't see US component and if I go with EU, I don't see Europe component. So what is happening here? Well we need to add something inside our contact which is going to be our outlet. Yep, you heard it right, that's the term outlet. So here we need to import this, I need to go with outlet and then wherever I need to insert that component, I can import it. I can just say outlet and then close it. Let me save, get back here. So this outlet will be replaced with any of the component that we are trying to load. So if I get here now, you can see this is EU. So now I have US. I have India. This is working great. And the greatest thing that we can do right now is we can set it anywhere. So suppose after showing all the information about my contact, I have this and then I am going to have a form at the bottom. I can do that. So if I save, get back here, you can see. So maybe I am showing the phone number here. So if someone visit IN, I am showing the phone number here, rest all the information here. Something like this, maybe about my WhatsApp number, email, everything is here. Then phone number address will be here according to the country. If I go with EU, then you can see EU. If I go with US, you can say US. And this is at the bottom. So I can have more content here. My JSX is it's depending on me at the top it's depending on me so i hope you got the idea how we can utilize the power of nesting one more thing we can do is suppose we created page for us we pre-created page for india we created for europe but what if they visit something like any other country or continent something like this what what will be the task let's say they type au here if i press enter i get into 404 but what I want is if someone type something like uh, anything, anything, if someone type anything, instead of loading AU, I can show any specific component to them. 
it can be anything but i can show them so to all the other part of the world i can have contact other something like this component to all the other part of the world i need to show this route i can do that uh, currently this doesn't exist i'm going to get an error but we can do that if i just pass this contact here if i just pass us for a moment you will get an idea so if suppose someone come on to au it will load this component uh, suppose if uh, someone comes with uh, maybe Japan you can see it is loading here so we can pass any type of country now and it is going to load so I hope you got the idea this is optional stuff depending on our requirement but this should be fine okay let me get to home page okay that's it I hope you got the idea we have covered almost everything a beginner should know now at this point of time you might be thinking what is this mess how we are going to handle a big project because if you observe we can handle routes because at the end of the day they will be limited uh, instead of having 10,000 product now we have just single link and similarly others will be followed but what is this how we are going to handle these type of import and what if we work on a big project this will be filled with uh, like hundreds of file so how we are going to divide them well there is a solution and for that we need to discuss about structuring of our files again now remember this entire structuring that we are going to do is by our own experience this is not default from react everyone every company they they started following some similar pattern so this structuring is going to be done according to that so in the next lecture let us talk about how to structure our component and this whole mess as we grow with our project. So thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us try to improve our folder structure and how to import and export thing. One thing you need to understand is that all of this that we are going to do right now is not by this is not by official react we are doing it because it is followed in the community that's it there is no specific reason and since the method is great uh, it help us to improve the entire way that we are importing and exporting stuff so we are going to follow that one thing you also need to understand that the section about routing is over we have completed entire routing Take this as a separate section where we are restructuring our project according to our requirement. Now let's focus on what I mean. So now at till this point of time we had only component folder. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to add a new folder and I'm going to call this as pages. Now why I'm creating this pages? Because since we have already covered routing, now you can understand that there will be only certain page with our whole thing rest there will be component that will be inside our page for example we have header and footer component these two are not pages these two are component that is used everywhere so what we can do is we can keep them in component and shift a lot of things into pages and then we can divide thing as we move forward and grow our project let me explain you with practical example. Let me open this. Let me open this. So we have a home page. Great. Let me move this into page. Then we have a product detail page. Great. Let me move this here. Then we have a product list page. Awesome. This is great. Uh, page not found. Yep. I have that header. Nope. Footer. Nope. Contact you. I N U S. Nope. Contact us. Yep and then admin okay great so now these are all the pages basically maybe later on we are going to create few other item that will be inside our component so that's how we can create thing we can also divide them into folder so if you think there are too much stuff related to contact and only for contact i can create a contact folder and move stuff around it okay okay we are going to do that don't worry we will be uh, solving all of this but before that i am going to do 
I need to fix all the import before that because all the imports are messed here. Now this is not from this admin is not from component. Nope. We need to fix that. So before fixing it, let's try to create more mess. So now we know that uh, there will be more stuff related to contact. So what I can do is I can create a new folder and I can have specifically for contact. Inside this, I will have main information, main page for contact and all the specific contact component that we know we will never use again anywhere else. So I can keep it here. Awesome. This is specifically for contact. Now maybe we have certain component for home only. I can create a page for that and keep my home as well as home specific component that will be inside our folder. Now, do we need to import like this, uh, like this? Because at the end of the day, if we increase our route, it will be pretty mess to handle them. No, we don't need to do that. What we do is we usually create an index, index.js for our component and for our pages. And here we say export what we need to export. We need to export header from and here inside this I need to mention everything. I will be having a header and I will be having a footer. Remember we need to do it only one time that will be inside our index. Now if I need to access this, if I get here inside my app, now instead of importing them in a two separate way, what I can say is header comma footer from my components. That's it. Now if I had 10 item, I can just say header footer and then all the 10 item from my component and I will import them inside my index.js inside my component. So everything will be here. Now if I need to use them anywhere else, I can do that. I don't need to remember where my header is, where my footer is. That's great. Let's do something similar for my pages. Let's create a index.js here. And what I'm going to do, do this exact same thing for each one. That's just one time job. I need to say export. Uh, let's start with my home. Let's say home from, it will be from my home. Now I need to do something similar. After home, I am going to say, I am going to create for my admin suppose. Then after admin, I'm going to have for my page not found. I'm going to restructure them at the end. Then I have my products that is product list. Then I'm going to have my product detail. Then I am going to have my contact from contact slash contact. Then I will have my contact I N from my contact slash contact I N and similarly the U S and the E U. Now I can have them in a proper order. Uh, I can say at the end it will be page not found. And uh, till then this will be the order. So I have them together. And now instead of doing this, what I can do is I can have home, comma list, comma for my detail. Then I can have my contact then at the end i will have for my page not found in between i will have for my in europe and us uh, let me remove all of this am i missing something i am missing admin let me remove all of this so that's how I'm going to import it. Now I'm going to, instead of going from import from component, I am going to import them from 
pages and that will be from index basically so you can either you need to mention if you not it will be default from index so i can say this that's it we have resolved our mess and make sure you have comma everywhere uh, let me save now if i get here you can see things are still working let me go to us yep it's working fine that means that this is one way to structure stuff now later on when you have more component you can divide them into folders you can have a folder for layout that is going to have your footer and header maybe on your home page you have testimonial section maybe on your product list page you have card section on product detail page you have section for your add to cart or maybe faqs so there will be many more component and it can be divided into layout sections it can be divided according to elements for your button faqs and lot more so yep you can divide stuff all you need to take care now is to have them exported carefully in your index.js on pages as well as component like here we divided the stuff into folder but we are exporting from our index carefully so we are able to access in just one go that's the first step to have pages now i still don't like this route is there any solution yes there is a solution so what we are going to do is we are going to create a folder called as routes and inside this i can move all this stuff i can create a new file let's say all routes.js and here i can basically move everything uh, this is going to work like a component let's say rafc and here i will first create a fragment and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take all of this yep add them here and one more thing i need to do is since these are using all of this component so i'm going to take them I am going to add at the top all the component that was required here and I am going to save it and then I am going to import that route here but I am also going to take this add it at the top yep and now I am going to import my all route from routes slash all route and here i can just add this individually let's say all route awesome so what we just did is we converted everything related to our route its import and every all this stuff here so it's a separate file in future if we want to create more routes we can create a file and then add them here also we don't require main here now what usually happen is we keep main at the top for these pages so if i get into my page now get into admin so usually what happen is we cover everything inside main because we know this is a page this is not a component now we are we are treating it as a page we know it is going to have all this stuff inside it now I need to do something similar for all of them but we are not going to cover this EU, this IN, this US because I know these are component for me. So let's do that. Let me quickly do. Let me get into here. Let me have my main. Awesome. Let me take this. And I'm going to fast forward it for so it will be easy for you. So that's it. Now you can see the improved structure. We have everything pretty clear. This is our header. Then we are going to have all route, then footer. Then if I get into my routes, if I'm going to have a particular route, I am going to get into these type of pages. 
Now these pages can have their own component or they can have common component. Also all of these route have header at the top and footer at the bottom. Now if I get back to my routes, uh, I just need to fix this because now the import is changed. So it should be from pages here. If I save, get back here, things are working fine. If you have any other type of name, then please mention. Otherwise by default, this is index only. So you don't need to mention index everywhere. Awesome. Now this is much better. We have a better structure. We have this and routes and we have pages. Okay. Uh, everything is working fine. That's all. I hope you got the idea, not just about routing in the previous section, but about how to restructure stuff because now I will recommend you to follow this. We have our asset folder, we have our component, we have our route and we also have our pages. In future, you create your own route, maybe for protected, for your private, keep them here and then later on you can import stuff. And also uh, I try to keep my pages with main. So the only reason is if I get here, get into inspect. Now you can see the clear structure. This is header. This is main. This is footer inside my header. I know this is about logo and this is about my navigation. Similarly, my main can have multiple section. If you remember earlier, we did that. So each one of them will be a section. I can have multiple section and then this is my footer. So I, I really want to have a proper semantic page. That's all for this section. I hope you got the idea. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one.